It's a bird. Go on. Oh, you see, it's not an elephant. <laughs> Don't be stupid. Sid, you can't get an elephant in a cage. I think he makes the joke. Oh. <laughs> Excuse uh, me. What sort of a bird is it, then? A cockatrice. <laughs> Big pun? A cockatrice. Cockatrice? Hey, you're one cocker too many. <laughs> it's a cockley too. Cockatoo! Oh, you mean you just taught him a parrot? Ah, that's right, yeah. Oh, what are you going to call this parrot then? Polly, that's original. <laughs> oh, that is just who we want to see. Oh, well, if it's tea on tick you're after, forget it. No, 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 no. Look, we just bought the bird and we want to leave it with you. How do you want it cooking? <laughs> Don't want it cooking. Oh. It's our new pet. Oh, well, how was I to know? People eat anything these days. Look, we just want you to look after it until we finish class, OK? Yes, all right. Put it behind the counter. OK. Thank you, Your Ladyship. <laughs> Evening, Sydney. Hello, Mr Brown. Have a good weekend. Lousy. Got the mother-in-law staying with us. Oh, how'd you get on well with her, then? She's never forgiven me for marrying her daughter, and I've never forgiven her for letting me. <laughs> you know, last night, there was only one thing that stopped me putting my head in the gas oven. What was that? We're all electric. <laughs> oh, cheer up, Sid. Remember, when you feel things can't be worse, they can only get better. That's true, true. I suppose she has got a pop off sometime. <laughs> yeah. Ah, bonsoir, Monsieur Brown. You're just the man I'm wanting. Me? Yes, can you help me? Well, I'll do my best. I have the big problems. Yeah, well, I'm afraid I can't do much about those. <laughs> no, not that problem. Oh, sorry. My life, she's a mess up. Is she? I mean, is it? What sort of a mess up? I tell you, last month I met this boy. Ah, an affair of the heart. This boy, Pierre, he keeps writing to me. Yeah, he's a foreigner. No, he's French. Oh. Well, never was to me. He's a... Never mind, go on. Henri has found the letters. Oh, the plot thickens. I not like a jealous man. Pierre? No. Oh, Henri. Marcel! He works with Henri as a consular. I'm sorry, I'm a bit confused. Who is Marcel jealous of, Pierre or Henri? Emile. I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> There's another thing. He keeps telephoning me. Who? Pierre, Henri, Marcel or Emile? Jean-Paul. <laughs> I've heard of safety in numbers, but this is ridiculous. They're all after the one thing. My buddy. That's all they're after. Yeah. Well, you must just try and discourage them. Oh, no. I like it. <laughs> I see Pierre Monday, Henri Tuesday, Marcel Wednesdays, Emile Thursdays, and Jean-Paul on Fridays. That is my problem. What is? My Saturdays and Sundays, they are so dull. Ah, oh, good evening, Anna. You're busy? <laughs> no, no, no. You've just finished. Good. I have a gross problem. Oh, not another one. Who is it? Hans, Karl, Wilhelm or Adolf? <laughs> no, it is my homework. Oh, sorry. Your question is asking, what is correct address for a member of parliament? Yes. I do not know where any members of parliament are living. No, the question means, how do you address them? What do you call an MP? Ah, I don't know that either. Right Honourable. Jawohl. They want me to write it on the blackboard? No, not W-R-I-T-E. R-I-G-H-T, right. 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 The screw the big me! What's that wrong, you funny chicken? Go away, you can do it, take away! Honey, what is going on? It is orangey. What is the matter with him? Oh, blimey. He has gone oranges. <laughs> yes, please, give me bananas. 
Charlie, good. <laughs> not open this door, I'm breaking it down. Charlie, unlock the door. Oh, no. I'm not unlocking the door. Right, well, if you won't unlock it, I will. I have been warning you. Now I'm coming in. Ah! <laughs> Angie, what is the meaning of this? The meaning is... <laughs> Some damn fool is opening the door just as I'm charging it. Mr. Brown opens the door. <gasps> Thousand apologies. <laughs> right, come over here, Ali. Now, what is all this about? That barbarian is calling me a hairy goat. <laughs> is this true, Ali? Yes, please. But this infidel is calling me the son of a cross-eyed camel. That is not true. <laughs> I am calling him an illegitimate son of a cross-eyed camel. Yeah, well, it's not good enough. Ah, you want me to be calling him something worse? I don't want anybody calling anybody anything. Whatever your differences are, kindly leave them outside the classroom. Now sit down, the pair of you. Come on. Ah, Taro. Ah, so. <laughs> Did you have a good weekend? Uh, spend the weekend reading book by Charles Dickens. Oh, which book were you reading? Oh? Uh, which, <laughs> which book were you reading? Uh, Oliver Twist. Really? <coughs> Do you understand most of the words? Understand all words. What, even the old English? Oh. No old English words in my book. Ah, must have been a revised edition. No, no. Japanese edition. <laughs> I thought it was too good to be true. Good evening, Master G. Still knitting away? Oh, no. I am the knit cardigan. <laughs> yeah, what I meant was that would, uh, you, you misunderstood what I was saying. And you are being misunderstood what I am being knit. No, why don't we just forget the whole thing? <laughs> good evening, Sue Lee. Not good for me. Oh, dear, what's the matter? I have lost my riddle lead book. Oh, good. Uh, I mean, bad luck. I rock everywhere, but not find it. Does this mean you won't be treating us to any of the honorable chairman's quotations? Oh, no. No quotations by heart. Chairman Mao, he say, in every process there are yes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We know them all. Ciao, everybody. Hello, hey. boss. Uh -huh. Only just made it. Sorry, boss. We had things to do. That's right. We just got a fantastic bird. Really? Does this bird have a name? Sure. Polly. Well, in future, kindly refer to her as Polly and not as a bird. Okay, Koki. She's going to be very good company for us at night. <laughs> us? What do you mean, us? Well, we're going to share her. One night she sleeps with me, another night she sleeps with Max. I don't think I want to hear anymore. Why? You not like birds? Well, let's just say I don't like sharing them. Hey, I fixed something for you. You give me a fiver, we go get you a bird. Sure. What color do you want? <laughs> oh, what color is yours? Mostly red, with a blue neck and a green dress. <laughs> ah, pennies dropped. Where? <laughs> Polly is a parrot. Well, that's right. What do you think she is? An elephant? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Sit down. Oh, what about the penny? Ignore the penny. Buenas tardes. Juan, you're late. Por favor. Never mind, por favor. You should have been here five minutes ago. Why? What happened? Quiet! <laughs> <laughs> Silencio! Thank you. Sorry. Why well, are you late? Uh, I tell you. My boss, where I work, he tell me about a horse who's going to win the big race tomorrow. Very clever horse. Talking horse. Juan, horses don't talk. Si, senor. He told me he'd get the tip straight from the horse's mouth. <laughs> That's just a racing term. So right. Then he tell me to put my shirt on horse. You didn't? Nah. Oh, thank goodness for that. My shirt wouldn't fit the horse. Oh. <laughs> Silence! I bet ten pounds to win on the horse. Oh, and ten pounds is a lot of money. You could lose. No lose. Tomorrow, I'll be plenty rich. Muchas pesetas. Look, there's no such thing as a certainty. Si, senor. My horse is sure to win. How do you know? Ah, easy, I tell you. Big race starts at two o'clock, so right? Yes. Bookmaker, he tell me, my horse starts at ten to one. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the odds. Your horse.
boss will start at two o'clock, just like all the rest. He tried to cheat me. I go punch his face. You'll do no such thing. Sit down. It's time we all started work. Now, just take the register to Miss Courtney, and then we'll have a look at your homework, all right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Miss Courtney, I've brought the register. Two absentees tonight, Ingrid and Zoltan. Oh, well, I've had a letter from your Hungarian student. Oh, has he gone sick? No, yeah, he's gone back to Hungary. Oh. Enter. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Courtney? Yes. What do you want? I'm Sheikh El Hamid, and I'm interested in your English classes. Oh, well, if you don't mind me saying so, your English is fairly good. Thank you. It is comforting to know that my years at Oxford were not wasted. <laughs> I would like my personal chauffeur to join your class. Oh, I'm afraid that is quite impossible. It is midterm and students are not permitted to join halfway through a course. Rules are rules. I'm sure you could make an exception for a little donation of uh, uh, 2,000 pounds. <laughs> this isn't the Dorchester Hotel, you know. <laughs> this is an educational establishment. You can't expect us to bend the rules just because you plonk two grand on the table, can you, Miss Courtney? Well, of course he can. <laughs> Where is your chauffeur now? Outside. Will you come in now? <laughs> but he's white. People usually are from Glasgow. <laughs> he's Scots. But of course. But why do you want us to teach him English? Because I can't understand a word of what he says. Right, <laughs> John? I don't mean that, but I don't understand it. I don't know what I'm going to put in here, but... I mean, you don't stop saying it, Jimmy, eh? <laughs> No, I don't suppose, Colonel. I've been told just go to hang about here. I shall burn a ten fudge you said it was do it. I'm sorry, Miss Porter, but I think the whole idea is ridiculous. I am supposed to teach English to foreign students. He sounds like a foreign student. Oh, look, wouldn't it be far simpler for you to just get another chauffeur? No, I couldn't do that. You see, Jock's father gave his life defending my father during the war. I feel I owe him a living. Yeah, well, in that case, why don't you make him very happy and give him a job in your harem or something? Don't be stupid, Mr. Brown. Oh, I wonder if you'd mind waiting outside for a moment while Mr. Brown and I discuss this matter privately. Not at all. The door, Mr. Brown. <laughs> now, listen to me, Mr. Brown. You are a teacher of English, and it is your job to teach English no matter who or what your students may happen to be. Well, actually, as I Don't to interrupt. Now, you... remember that the Arabs are extremely wealthy. Who knows what other benefits they may bestow upon us? Only the other day I was reading in the paper about an Arab who was so pleased with the service at his hotel that he presented the manager with a Rolls Royce. Yeah, well, we are not running a hotel, Miss Courtney. Money isn't the be-all and then... a Rolls Royce. <laughs> yes. Well, I suppose I could give it a try. Good. Look upon it as a challenge. I'll do my best. I wonder if you would care to join me in a cup of tea in the office, and then later on I'll show you round the school. How very kind of you. <laughs> well, what am I doing? I go away. You want to hang a bit here or what? <laughs> I'd like you to hang about. I'm going to try and teach you to speak English. Oh, do it so high up, son. See me no for it. <laughs> well, I'm not exactly jumping for joy myself. Huh? <laughs> 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 oh, it's like a Tower of Babel. Can't you think of anything better to do than chatter to each other? Sure. 
Hey, we go for a cup of tea. That's a good idea. <laughs> Don't do no such thing. Sit down, be quiet, and pay attention. Right, you'd uh, better sit ne next to Anna. Okay. Hello, Hen. How's it going? <laughs> what is your name? Hamish Hector Dougal Donald Stewart McGregor. <laughs> well, I'll put you down as a joke. Oh, we like them. Well, as you can see, we have a new student. Ah, uh, is there all very lucky for help me as one of you, you know what I mean? Or as you see yourself, oh, I renew and all that haggis bashing nonsense. Don't blame me. What language is he speaking? Now, believe it or not, it's English. Ah, he's right enough, you know, he's right enough. If that is English, what language is it that we are learning? Uh, Mr. McGregor is speaking in dialect. I thought you said he was speaking English. <laughs> oh, it's English, but with a dialect. Hey. I know all about them dialects. You do? Sure, I've seen them on television. <laughs> Doctor Who and the dialects. No, oh, that's dialects. Ah, okie okay, A dialect is a form of speech peculiar to certain areas. Now, tell them where you're from. I am a jock. <laughs> what is jock? Oh, Master G, please, I am being know what is jock. Good. Would you like to tell us all? A jock is B, a funny story. Did you know that's a joke? Mr. McGregor is from Scotland, which is part of Great Britain. Great Britain is comprised of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. No. <laughs> what do you mean, no? Not Wales in England. Wales in the sea. <laughs> At the end of the M4. Ah, sorry. Wrong number. I'm not quite sure what to do with you for the moment. Oh, well, as you say, in that case, you'll just gang a war. Eh? Not ganging, <laughs> going anywhere. Just sit down. For a start, you can concentrate on your diction. Well, I don't have a thought. What are you saying? Well, for example, repeat after me the fat black cat sat on the mat. The fat black cat sat on the mat. No, no, no. Let's take each word separately, all right? The. The. Fat. The. No, not fat. 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 Black. Black. Cat. Cat. Sat. Shat. On the. On the. 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 Mat. Mat. Good. Now try the whole thing. The fat black cat shot him up. Now, well, you better just sit there and listen while I get on with the rest of the lesson. All right, do whatever you please yourselves, son. You're all right, aren't you? <laughs> what are you doing? Having a dram. Oh, you fancy a touch of stag's breath yourself? Why, then? Certainly not. And I don't allow drinking in the classroom. Oh, see, well, help yourself to smoke if you feel like it. No drinking and no smoking. God, it's worse than being in a kirk. Precisely. <laughs> Right, now, if you recall, I asked you each to write a brief essay on your various beliefs. I hope you've all done so. Suli, would you like to read us out your essay? What I believe. Firstly, I not believe in religion. Excuse me, Suli, the subject was what you believe, not what you don't believe. Firstly, it is necessary to make platform on which intellectual thought can stand. When building house, it is necessary to make firm foundation. Uh, excuse me, please. I'm not understanding something. Yes, Ali, what is it you're not understanding? I'm not understanding a word of what she's talking about. <laughs> I quite agree, Ali. Suli does rather tend to be dialectically verbose. Oh, blimey. Now I'm not understanding what you are saying. <laughs> point taken. Uh, right, sit down, Ali. Thank you. Carry on, Suli, and this time stick to the point. I believe everyone is equal in eyes of state. I believe in Chairman Mao. I believe in dictatorship of proletariat and suppression of capitalism. Ah, rubbish. <laughs> rubbish? Western world corrupt and evil. Ah, we're here in paddling your paddy field. I look forward to do lace the legend. Ah, oh, shut your gob. <laughs> Kindly keep your remarks to yourself. Excuse, please. Yes, Tarot? Not polite or to insult lady, please apologize. Sir. Get naughty. <laughs> Put up your fist. Sir. Hi, yeah. Okay, Harry Carey, if it's a fight you want, you'll get one. You ready? Yeah! <laughs> oh, sit down. Honor, 
must be satisfied all. Yeah, well, you can satisfy it after class. Sit down, Tom. And as for you, I'd be obliged if you would keep quiet. <laughs> Thank you, Sully. I'll read your essay later. Um, Juan. Uh, si, senor. Would you like to read us your essay? Sorry. What I believe by Juan Cervantes. Para servirle. So far, so good, eh? <laughs> yes, come on, get on with it. Sorry, sorry. I believe in one God. And I believe in Jesus Christ, Spiritus Santo <laughs> Now, Jesus Christ, Spiritus Santo <laughs> was the first Roman Catholic. Oh, what are you on about your big chanter ass laugh? <laughs> Por favor. He was Jewish! Por favor. Jock is trying to make the point that Christ was Jewish. No. He was a Roman Catholic. No, I was there. He was a Jewish. I punch you in your head. I kick you up at the back side and I kick you up the front side. I'll cross your eyes out. Yes, and please be leaving something for me also. Okay, who's first? Yeah, I'm yes, not going to I'll kill you. Sit down. And as yes, for you, if I have any more interruptions from you, yeah. out you go. All right, all right. Not a word. Stum. Good. I go on, so right? No, Juan, your beliefs are just as controversial as Sue Lee's. Por favor. No, it doesn't matter. Sit down. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try you, Ranjit. I am believing that all men are being born equal. Oh, no. <laughs> Chuck, I have warned you. Oh, come on, Jimmy. I can't be expected to sit here and listen to Charlie Chapati claiming his bike. <laughs> He's calling you Charlie Chapati. <laughs> oh, well, the same goes for you, take away Tommy. <laughs> I'll give you a bunch of fiber. And as for you, you can just kind of. Just go. Where is everybody going? Tea, Blake. Well, do it quietly. Ah, oh, Miss Courtney, I'm sorry. I, I'm afraid I can't do it. Can't do what? Put up with our Scottish friend. He's a, he's a disruptive influence on the rest of the class. Mr Brown, I am afraid that you must. I have invited the Sheikh to meet the Board of Governors. He has promised to give us a new school hall. I don't care if he's promised to give you the Albert Hall. Forgive me, I couldn't help overhearing. Is there some sort of problem? No. Yes, I'm afraid I cannot put up any longer with this chauffeur of yours. He's rude, self-opinionated and extremely unpleasant. And you can keep your Rolls Royce. <laughs> what an extraordinary man. Uh, you better wait in the car. OK, Gaffer, just hang about inside the motor now, eh? Right. <laughs> that is a pity. I was quite looking forward to meeting your Board of Governors. And so you shall. But now that circumstances have changed. Well, circumstances may have changed, but the object of the exercise remains the same. Now, forgive me if I'm wrong, but uh, as far as I understand it, you wish to be able to converse with your Scottish chauffeur. <laughs> yes, but I fail to see how that can be achieved now. Well, every problem has its solution. And that is? He does as I tell him, or he gets the sack. Come along, everybody. Quickly. I shall be taking you for the rest of the lesson, and I won't stand for any nonsense. What has happened to Mr. Brown? Mr. Brown is in my office doing some private tuition. Repeat after me. It's a bra bricked moon licked nicked the nicked. It's a bra bricked moon licked nicked the nicked. Very good. <laughs>
Thank you. Hello, Gladys. Tea, no sugar. Tea, no milk. Yeah. Oh. And how about you? Do you want your tea without milk or without sugar? Without tea. Th For me, it's coffee. <laughs> You're in early tonight. Yeah, we come early to do the homework. Oh. Every class time, we are getting it wrong. So we make a plan to meet here and do it all together. Uh, ah. Plenty smart, huh? Yeah. <laughs> here we are. I hope we are not being late. No, we just got here ourselves. You want a tea? Oh, thank you very much. Not so <laughs> mine. Thousand apologies. Much better do the homework first, before Mr. Brogno arrives. That's a good idea. Okay, first question. Give a single noun to replace the following phrase. A person who has reached the age of 100. Anybody have any ideas? Sure. Very old man. <laughs> That's not right. She, hombre, 100-year-old, very old man. Now, we want one word for someone who's at a hundred. Ah. Oh, blimey. I'm doing that. Farouk. What is Farouk? Uh -huh. My uncle. He's being a hundred years old. That is not being the answer, you tandoori tweet. <laughs> All right, you Punjabi prawn. You tell us the answer. Centurion. Well, that sounds okay to me. Okay, okay. Everybody put down Centurion. <laughs> Next the question. Right. Give the past tense and the past participle of the following verbs. Cling. Clunk. <laughs> that's right. Clunk. But well, that's the past tense. Now we want the past possible. Cling. Clung. Clang. <laughs> that's right. Oh, blimey. Mr. Brown will be surprised when he find out how clever we are. <laughs> Next question. Past tense and past participle of the word fly. Flood. <laughs> no, no, not a flood. Flyed. <laughs> That's better. Flyed. We want one more. We get fly, flied, flid. <laughs> okay. Hey, we must do the homework like this every time, huh? And the next <laughs> question. Give opposite in meaning to following nouns. Disappointment. That appointment. <laughs> With due respect, uh, opposite of uh, disappointment is uh, joy. Uh, Okie Tokyo. Can I have some milk, please, Gladys? Yeah. Hey, Daniel, what you got in the pram? A bag of the potatoes. Uh, <laughs> no potatoes, bambino. <laughs> Hello, bambino. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, he speak to me. Uh, nice little boy. How are you knowing he's a little boy? Easy. He's got what every little boy has. Blue clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Here, is it yours? No, it belongs to the family I work as au pair. Oh. They had to go out tonight, so I thought I'd bring him here to the lessons. Oh, you can't do that. Why not? Well, it's against regulations. Oh, Miss Courtney would never allow it. Are you sure? I'm positive. But what am I going to do? I don't want to miss my classes. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. You can leave him here behind my counter and collect him when you go home. Thank you, Gladys. Oh, don't mention it. <laughs> See you later, boys. <laughs> Holy ravioli. <laughs> what I'm thinking now, I could be excommunicated. <laughs> I was excommunicated five minutes ago. Give <laughs> a collective noun to describe a group of footballers. Uh, Real Madrid. Okay. <laughs> that is no good answer. The correct answer is a team. Hey, that's right. Team. Yeah. <laughs> Who said that? I did. <laughs> Whoops, a da daisy. Hey, how long have you been here? Long enough. Look, homework means work you do at home, individually, not here collectively. As you obviously cannot be trusted, you'll all stay behind after class and do your homework then. Uh, now, come along, down to the college. Uh, now then, what about a nice smile now for your then. auntie Glad? Oh, you know you're a lovely fella. <laughs> I say, 
Now this is going to tickle your tummy. <laughs> Here, give us a nice kiss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Sid. Gladys, look, what you do is your own affair, but I shouldn't let Miss Courtney catch you at it. No, what do you mean? I heard you. Oh, I'm doing it as a favour. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Want to tickle his tummy? <laughs> tickle his tummy, he likes it, look. Oh, it's a saucepan lid. <laughs> a little lid bath. It's Danielle's. I'm looking after it for her. Yeah? Good night. a lovely little fella. <laughs> How are you then? <laughs> goody, goody, goody. <laughs> goody. <laughs> goody. <laughs> <laughs> he fed me! Hello, <laughs> everybody. Place us, please. Quick as possible. Uh, thank you, Juan. Right, now that we've lost Zoltan and Ingrid, uh, I suggest we fill up these empty places. Jamila, would you like to come back to the front? No, Master G. I am very happy to be sit at backside. <laughs> Taro? Japanese philosophers say, a person who is in front, Lionel, more likely to get home, shot at. <laughs> ah, so. <laughs> Pally and Suli, why don't you come out here then, all right? Shot Jelly good. Right, now, tonight, by way of a change, we are going to do a crossword. Now, do you all know what a crossword is? Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Well, I shall ask you each a clue and hope that I get some correct answers. We'll start with you, Juan. Sí, señor. One across, the feminine of horse. Eh, por favor. <laughs> the feminine of horse. You've heard of the word horse. Ah, sí, sí. Uh, so a throat. <laughs> no, that's horse. Ah, sorry. Now, come along, the feminine of horse. Eh, uh, lady horse. <laughs> No, uh, anybody know? Yeah, feminine of horse, mare. Well done. Squeeze me, please. Yes, Sally? I am thinking mare is not feminine. Yes, it is. Oh, no. Mare of London is most definitely masculine. <laughs> that is a different sort of mare. That's M A Y O R. <laughs> Jelly good. <laughs> Ranjit, three across, not down. I am knowing it is not down because you are saying it's across. <laughs> not down is the clue. Thousand apologies. Well, what is the answer? No, what is not the answer? <laughs> the answer is up. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Right, Giovanni, six across, a punctuation mark used to indicate antithesis or quotation. <laughs> Ask me another. <laughs> Come along, think. I'll give you another clue. It's not a comma, but it begins with a C. <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Anybody know? Colon. Good. Colon. O L O N. Right. Ali. Seven across. A word used to describe a set of four musicians. Beatles. <laughs> no, no, not a group, although the Beatles were one of these. Oh, blimey. <laughs> if you have a cake and you cut it into four, you then have four... pieces. <laughs> yeah, but what is each piece called? A slice? <laughs> Water. Jelly good. <laughs> now, what do we call four musicians? Uh, anybody? Qu quartet? Good, quartet. Well done. R T E T. Right. Uh, Suli, eight across to tell an untruth. To spread decadent Western propaganda about <laughs> four years in the <laughs> yeah, Well, the, the correct answer is love. Same thing. So that's a matter of opinion. L I E. Right. Um, Jamila, one down, the plural of mouse. Um, mouses. <laughs> oh, no, Jamila, think. Look, look at the board. It's M blank, C blank. Any idea? No, Master G. I am also B blank. <laughs> Mice. Mickey. <laughs> Mickey? Ah, 
Mickey Mouse's. Mice. <laughs> Sorry, Master D. Right, uh, Taro. Ah, so. <laughs> two down to consign or dismiss to an inferior position. Do you know the answer? Not known. Question. <laughs> Look, if a football team uh, finish at the bottom of the league, then it means that they are very bad old team. <laughs> they get relegated. So the answer to two down is relegate. Right. Um, Max. Yes, Bosh. Four down, the opposite of wealth. Skint. <laughs> no. Brock? No. If you are very poor, what state are you in? Desperate. <laughs> Mr. Brown, can I speak to Danielle outside? Yes, if you must. It, it's very personal. Oh. Oh, yeah. What's the matter? The baby's done a bunk. <laughs> Is that the same as doing a pooey? <laughs> no, he's gone. Gone? Yes. Gladys went into the ladies. When she came out, there he was, gone. That is impossible. Well, if you don't believe it, come and have a look for yourself. But if he's not there, where can he be? I, I haven't got the faintest idea. Now, can anybody tell me the rule about I and E? Jamila? I before E, excepting after C. Very good. Juan. Juan! Si, senor. <laughs> you are not paying attention. Si, plenty attention. <laughs> All right, what did I just say? You say, Juan, you're not paying attention. <laughs> uh, yes, be before that one. Uh, before that, uh, you're right. I know, pay attention. <laughs> we were discussing I before E, except after C. Ah, sorry. <laughs> spell receipt. Por favor. You heard spell receipt. Uh, R, E, C, uh, I before E, except C. <laughs> e. Uh. I, T. <laughs> uh, come on, think. You've missed something out. What comes before tea? Uh, breakfast. <laughs> uh, I am not amused. Well, you're not here to make jokes, Ron. Ah, sorry, amigo. P T. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Max, what always follows a cue? People who are queuing. <laughs> the letter Q. Ah. Ah. Sure. L M N O P Q R. <laughs> We're discussing spelling, not the alphabet. If a word begins with Q, what is the next letter? I don't know, Bosch. <coughs> you. Me what? <laughs> Q U. Only you can follow a Q. <laughs> okay. Come to my office for a moment. What, well, now? Yes, it is most important. Ah, well, uh, carry on studying chapter 10 on spelling. I shan't be long. <coughs> is it, um, is it something I've done? I sincerely hope not. <laughs> Take a look at that. It's a pram. Oh, well done, Mr. Brown. <coughs> and what do you normally associate with prams? Babies? Exactly. Good Lord, you're not, are you? <laughs> not what? Expecting? Oh, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> what was that? A look in the pram. <laughs> it's a baby. Well, it's certainly not a cocker spaniel. 
No, you mustn't worry, Miss Courtney. I beg your pardon? These things happen even in the best families. There is no shame these days in being an unmarried mum. <laughs> oh, you silly little man. It's not mine. I found it in the canteen. I have spoken to Gladys, but she denies all knowledge of it. The poor little mite has obviously been abandoned. Oh, how Dickensian. I can only assume that one of the students from this school has deliberately abandoned that baby on our doorstep. I thought you said it was in the canteen. Oh, that's just a figure of speech, Mr. Brown. <coughs> now, I shall ask all the teachers to question their respective classes in an effort to discover the guilty party. OK, I'll go and question my... Oh, no, you won't. You will stay here and look after the baby while I inform the rest of the staff. What? Hello. <laughs> don't cry, don't cry. <laughs> come on, look, uh, come over here and uh, look at all the trees. Hey? <laughs> See all the birdies chirping? There, isn't that nice? <laughs> there we are. Rock a bye, baby, on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall, and down will come, baby cradle. Oh, yeah. What did you think of that, then? Eh? Well, stay there, and I'll go and get you a choppy bit. <laughs> what am I going to do? Not to worry. We find him for you. We search at the school. Sid and Gladys, they have looked everywhere. Maybe he's being baby napped. <laughs> you must be mean kidnapped. Yes, please. Mr. and Mrs. Barclay, they are going to kill me. How am I going to tell them I've lost their baby? Why not write them a letter? <laughs> I got an idea. If somebody stole Danielle's baby, why not we go outside and steal someone else's baby? <laughs> Don't be so stupid, Max. <laughs> Settle down and study your books. And why are you crying? Oh, Miss Courtney, I've done something very bad. Oh, what you do outside is no concern of mine. That's is something in the school. Where's my baby? Baby? <laughs> oh, so it's yours, is it? You know about it? I found it. Thank heavens, I must go to him. Now, just a moment. Come here, I want a word with you. Now, I know that we live in a permissive society, <laughs> and these things are not uncommon. But you must think of the baby. Or don't you love him a little? I love him very much. Good. Do you know who the father is? Yes. Well, then, have you never considered marrying him? How can I? He's only nine months old. <laughs> Not the baby, the father. I don't think his wife will be very happy. He's a married man. Yes. Oh, well, that's typical. They don't care who they get into trouble. It wasn't his fault. It was his wife's idea. <laughs> Heavens, how awful. Do your parents know the situation you're in? Yes. Well, surely they don't approve. Certainly. Next year, my sister is coming to England to do the same. <laughs> Extraordinary. Oh, no. Many French girls want to be au pairs. Au pair? Yes. This baby... It belongs to the family you work for. That's right. Thank heaven for that. <laughs> Pardon? It doesn't matter. I promise I won't bring him into school again. Well, see that you don't. Can I bring him into his class? No, he can stay where he is. He's in very good hands. <coughs> oh, there you are. Oh, oh, thank goodness. Well, what a shame. Come on, dear. I'll be glad. Yes, come on then. Oh, we're going to Auntie Glad. Yes, my darling. We're going to get a little drink of milk, please. Come on then. There. There. Come on, drink this, will we? Eh? You'll feel better. Well, at least it stopped crying. Perhaps he's dozed off. Yeah. Here we are then. Here's a chalky bicky for you. He's gone. Perhaps he's dipped out for a walk. <laughs> He's too young to walk. He can just about crawl. 
Well, he's got to be here somewhere. Well, where? I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. The window is open. Well, what about it? He could have crawled out. Could he? <laughs> well, of course it couldn't. Could it? <laughs> they crawled anywhere. I was the biggest crawler in our street. <laughs> no, I can believe that. Oh, I'm too frightened to look. Oh. It's not there. <laughs> Perhaps he's crawled along the edge and gone right the way round. Oh, well, you better crawl round and have a look. No, not me. I, I can't stand heights. I've got claustrophobia. Vertigo. Yeah, I've got that in my shoulder as well. <laughs> well, go well, I'll give you a bunker. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to see to me boiler. Well, aren't you staying here? No, no, I can't stand the sight of blood. I took it for a drink of milkies. Well, wait here a minute. Oh, very well. <laughs> now, take this baby back to the canteen and keep it there. I never want to see it again. Oh, very well. Oh, my baby, is he all right? Yes. I take him to the classroom. Oh, no. Miss Courtney said I have to keep him in the canteen. Oh, no. I not take the chance of losing him again. Oh, well, please yourself. Uh, he did it, then? Yeah. Who did what? Mr. Brown, he saved the baby off the window ledge. What are you talking about? The baby's never been on the window ledge. No? No. Well, Mr. Brown is. <laughs> Very pretty baby. Yeah, I would love to have a baby like that. Come out with me tonight, no. and I'll. <laughs> Hey, there's Professor. Blammy's out of his mind. Mr. Brown, please come in. Oh, oh, oh. 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 all right, Mr. Brown. Just about. How's the baby? Oh, he's okay. Oh, thank goodness for that. Would you hold him for me for a moment? Well, I don't think I can really. No, do while I fix his blanket. Oh, well, hurry up. Mr. Brown, what is that baby doing in the classroom? Wait. I'll give it three guesses. <laughs>
Cervantes. Buenas tardes, señora. In the first place, Mr. Cervantes, I am not a señora. Señorita. And in the second place, I would be much obliged if you would speak English in this school. So right. And another thing, Mr. Cervantes, there is no such word in the English language as so right. The correct terminology is it is all right, or it's all right, or even just all right. Do you understand? So right. <laughs> I give up. Whatever is the matter. I'm going to be sick. Well, not here, oh. I hope. My stomach, she's down side up. Well, for heaven's sake, why don't you go and see a doctor? I am going tonight. After lessons. <laughs> hey, amigo, would you like a cigar? No, no, thank you. You are not yourself tonight. Of course he is himself. Who else could he be? <laughs> Sumi means something is wrong. She's right. Oh. What is it, Juan? I am going to be sick. Holy ravioli. <laughs> you change your religion. Oh. Hey, the Pope's not gonna like that. I am welcoming you like a brother, but first you must be wearing the turban. Uh, what's the matter? You all crazy? I am sick in my stomach. Perdón, perdón. I am going to see if I have fever. In Japan, yes. we take a temperature from different places. <laughs> we not put thermometer in mouth. I am no known to want to know where you be put thermometer. <laughs> we put a... And, uh, oh, good evening, Good evening, Come on in your places, everybody. Thank you. Oh, something the matter, one? <laughs> what? He's a say he's not the feeling very well. Oh, really? What's wrong? <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? He's a say stop asking the stupid questions. <laughs> he's got a thermometer in his mouth. <laughs> Have you got a temperature? <laughs> what? A moment, though. Santa Madre! What is it? I am dead! <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. She, I have no temperature. You're looking at the wrong end. Ah, it's all right. What is it? 98.4. <laughs> I am dying! Well, that's normal. Eh, hey, maybe that the moment it's not working. Yes, it is. And up to now, it's the only thing that's working in this classroom. That's it. Yes. Now, you have all failed your lower Cambridge certificate examination once, and I don't want a repetition of that at the end of this term. So, tonight, I'm going to ask each of you to pick one of the ten subjects I have written on the blackboard, and then I shall ask you questions on them. Very straightforward. Music, British history, the royal family, poetry, Shakespeare, etc. All right? Now, who is going to start the ball rolling? We are not having a ball to be rolling anywhere. <laughs> All right, Ali, just for that, you can start. Now, which subject do you pick? Oh, blame me. <laughs> television. Television. Right. Who is known as the father of television? Eamon Andrews. <laughs> Logie Baird. Oh, blame me. I'm seeing him last night with his little friend, Boo Boo. <laughs> That's Yogi Bear. I'm talking about Logie Baird, the man who invented television. Sorry, please. Right. How much is a television license? I'm not knowing. I never buy one. <laughs> I hope you realize you can get into serious trouble for not having a license. Uh, please tell me something. The money for a license is for BBC, yes? Yes. Then I'm jolly okay. I only watch ITV. <laughs> it doesn't work that way, Ali. You still need a license. Now, Anna, which subject would you like? The Royal Family. The Royal Family, right. Who is the Prince of Wales? Harry Seacombe. <laughs> Prince Charles. Oh. Yeah. Which recent King of England was never crowned? Edward Trugor Vincer. Good. Max, pick a subject. Uh, British politics. British politics, right. What, where does the term Gladstone bag come from? Mrs. Gladstone. <laughs> Gladstone bag is the name given to a bag made popular by one of our Prime Ministers, William Ewart Gladstone. Sorry, boss. I'll ask you another. What function does the mace have in the House of Commons? Uh, they have the mace... Yes. Uh, ...to eat the cheese. <laughs> 
That's mice. Yeah. Maybe I pick another subject. Now, maybe you just sit down. OK. <laughs> Daniel, let's see which subject you prefer. I prefer the subject of love. Yes, I'm sure you do, but that is not written on the board. So would you please pick one that is written down? OK. Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Right. Who was Shakespeare's wife? Mrs. Shakespeare. <laughs> Very clever, but what was her maiden name? I do not know. Anne Hathaway. Can you name three of the plays Shakespeare wrote? Romeo et Juliette. Good. As you like it. One more. I do not know any more. Well, I'll give you a clue. King Kong. <laughs> Leah. Yeah. Tarot. Also. <laughs> Which subject do you choose? Poetry. Poetry. Right. Who wrote upon Westminster Bridge? Not no. <laughs> but uh, seems funny play to write. <laughs> it's a poem by Wordsworth. I'll ask you another. Who wrote to a field mouse? Sounds like a man who is uh, crazy in the head. <laughs> it's written by Robert Burns over 200 years ago. Jamila, pick a subject. The Bible. The Bible, right. Who was Samson? Victor Mature. <laughs> I beg your pardon? He was being telly last week in film. Well, never mind the film. Who was he historically? Ah, acha. He was man who was be very strong. One night, he is be fancy a bit of hanky-panky with woman behind <laughs> So, he is be hanky-pankying, and she is be ask him how he is be very strong. And he is be tell her it is in his long hair. So, one night when he is be fast asleep, she is be give him shorty back and sides. <laughs> and when he is wake, he is be take prisoner and blinded. But when his hair is be grow long again, he is be pulled down palace. Is that the authorized version? <laughs> it is what I'm be see on telly. Thank you, Jamila. Giovanni. Si, professore. Would you pick a subject, please? Eh, uh, uh, music. Right, music. Give me something from the Pirates of Penzance. I never heard of them. <laughs> are they a punk or a rock group? <laughs> the Pirates of Penzance is one of the Savoy operas by Gilbert and Sullivan. Oh, I really like him. Who? <laughs> Gilbert or Sullivan? <laughs> I'm talking about Gilbert and Sullivan. Oh, OK. Any more? Yes. What can you tell me about Handel's Largo? Not much. I never drink the stuff. <laughs> I love... Your lack of general knowledge is no laughing matter. Pranjit, it's your turn. Pick a subject. The British is less. <laughs> I always... Right. What is the capital of England? E. <laughs> I'll rephrase that. What is the capital city of England? London. Correct. Can you name three English counties? Oh, dear me, I am not knowing any English counties. Not one? No. The only county I am knowing is the county of Monte Cristo. <laughs> That's count. Thousand apologies. Right, thank you. Suli, your subject, please. Only two rest, British history. Right. Who was known as the Black Prince? Mohammed Ari. <laughs> Why, uh, Edward, the son of Edward III. Very solid. But who invented the cotton spinning machine? Chang Hoi Fang. <laughs> Wrong. Sir Richard Arkwright. You little act like copy invention from Hoi Fang. Just as all the Western imperialists steal invention from Chinese scientists. China first to invent telephone, television, radio, refrigerators, and discover penicillin, radium, and lots of other things. Rubbish. No. China not invent rubbish. <laughs> you know, some of them just talk it. Juan. Si, senor. I pick subject. Yeah, well, this, 
There's only one left. It's Hobson's choice. No, Hobson's choice. British custom. <laughs> well, that's what I meant. Do you know anything about British uh, custom? Plenty, plenty. Oh, good. First, you have uh, green or red. Green or red what? British custom. <laughs> if you have something to declare, you go on the red. <laughs> Nothing to declare, green. No one. See, I know. No, the question is not about those sort of customs. It means the things that we British do that are peculiar to us. Ah, speak English. <laughs> well, a little more than that one. Look, I'll give you an example. November the 5th, Guy Fawkes Day, is something we celebrate only in Britain. Ah, any more? Yes, afternoon tea, cricket, the boat race. Good, good. Any more? Bobber Job Week, Chelsea Flip. Look, I'm supposed to be asking you the question. <laughs> so I. <laughs> I, 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 I terrible pain in my stomach. Oh, oh yeah, right. Uh, Suli, would you nip down and... Uh, I'm sorry, would you run along and ask uh, Mrs Foster to come and have a look at one? Might do. Yeah, well, lie on the table. It might do. Go on, play. Oh, 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 blimey. He's not looking very well. I'm dying. Nonsense. Don't be so pessimistic. Eh, yeah, Professor is right. You're gonna be okay, cocky. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Mrs. Foster. Uh, Where does it hurt? Uh, stomach, stomach. Oh. <laughs> Better get him to the hospital. I think that this man has appendicitis. Are you sure? Mr. Brown, I was a senior sister for several years. If this man is not attended to very quickly, it could prove fatal. Any sign of Mr. Brown yet, Sidney? Very pardon? Mr. Brown! Oh, Mr. Brown! Oh, no, he's not back yet. This is most inconvenient. I don't know why he had to go to the hospital with Mr. Cervantes. Well, somebody had to go with him. <laughs> I come back. Don't tell me they've taken your appendix out already. Eh, uh, no, half operation. Not necessary. Oh, so you didn't have appendicitis after all? No. Pain was caused by abundante tortilla. Well, that sounds serious. What is it? Uh, too much eating. <coughs> pardon, pardon. And where is Mr. Brown? He no come back. What do you mean, he no come back? Uh, when we leave the hospital, we come down the step, and Mr. Brown, he missed just one step, and he break his leg. How could he possibly break his leg if he only missed one step? Stepped he missed, top step. <laughs> There you are, nurse. How's everything going? Very well, sister. Good. Did you remember to give Mr. Parker his blanket bath? I gave them all a blanket bath. All? Have I done something wrong? Blanket baths are for those patients who cannot bath themselves. They all seem to enjoy it, especially Mr. Brown. It was lovely. I'm sure it was. I should think you've set him back at least a couple of weeks. I was only doing my best. Well, in future, kindly remember that you are a student nurse, not a geisha girl. Sorry, sister. Oh, by the way, Mr. Jones is back from surgery. We have three Mr. Jones in this ward. What is his initial? Uh, Jones, W. Good. I'll go and have a look at him. Is there anything you fancy? <laughs> yeah, but I don't think Sister would approve. Oh, cheeky. Do you want a bottle? Oh, I couldn't have a light ale, could I? <laughs> not that sort of bottle. Ah, oh, no, thanks. Not until I've had the light ale, anyway. You're not getting it. I know, but it's worth a try. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you, do you know when I'll be discharged? Probably tomorrow. Oh, thank goodness for that. I can't wait to get back to my students. Oh, shudder to think what they're doing without me. Oh, oh, no. No. Come along, I'll set it down. Now, I intend to find out how you're coming along with your English. We are learning very much the well English. That's right. I speak the English so good, nobody knows that I'm Italian. I find that very hard to believe. <coughs> you see? Even you don't know. Paris! Now, I am going to ask you some general questions on everyday topics. First of all, can anyone tell me what the first day of the week is? 
sunny day. No, it is not sunny day. Rainy day? <laughs> Sunday. Repeat it, please. It, please. <laughs> Repeat the word Sunday. Sunday. Mr. Nadim, name me two seasons. Uh, salt and pepper. <laughs> Those are seasonings. Now give me the names of two of the seasons of the year. Oh, dearie me. Anybody? Spring time. Spring time. Spring time. <laughs> now, Mr. Nadine, what comes after spring time? Holiday time. <laughs> Summer time. Jelly good. Mr. Cervantes. Si, senora. What do the letters AC mean? Por favor. What does AC mean? Uh, four. AC has nothing to do with four. Sure. AC spade, AC hot, AC time, and AC <laughs> AC means alternating current. Ah, perdón. Wrong man. Mr. Papandrios. Yes, Miss Courtney? I don't suppose you can give me the name of any other sort of current? Sure, black current. <laughs> I am talking about electricity. AC is alternating current, DC is direct current. Okay. Mr. Nagazumi. Awesome. <laughs> what would it signify if I said you were a dog in the manger? Would well, seem you're crazy in the head. <laughs> your pardon? I am Manlo. Not doggo. You are also rather stupid. Oh, Miss Schmidt. Yeah. You are on a train going to Glasgow. Why am I going to Glasgow? Doesn't matter why. You want to sleep on the train, what would you ask for? A bed. <laughs> you would have a berth in the sleeping car. Nine. Beg your pardon? How can I have a berth when I'm not pregnant? <laughs> Wow. I save myself for when I meet Mr. Wright. For your information, Miss Schmidt, a berth, B-E-R-T-H, is the name given to a bed on a ship or a train. In Schuldigung, you must think I'm very stupid. That is the most sensible remark I have heard in this classroom so far. Mademoiselle Favre. Oui, Mademoiselle Courtney. Where is St. Paul's? St. Paul's what? <laughs> Cathedral. I do not know. It's somewhere in London, I think. It is near Ludgate Circus. Have you ever been to Ludgate Circus? No, but I have been to Billy Smart Circus. <laughs> You're all absolutely hopeless. Doesn't anybody know anything? Yes, please. I am knowing lots of things. Are you? Absolutely. Do you know what a Philistine is? Most certainly. It is medicine that is fortifying the over forties. <laughs> It is nothing of the sort. Thousand apologies. You are all Philistines. Oh, no. I am Pakistan. <laughs> Go to tea. Hey, Giovanni, you get me a cup of tea, and I go on a phone hospital to see how is Mr. Brown. Okay, cocky. All right. Oh, this is the king. Hello. Hello. Uh, would you please tell me how is Mr. Brown? Mr. Brown? Uh, could I have the Christian name, please? Sure. Juan. <laughs> Juan. Is he Spanish? No, 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 no. I am Spanish. I see. Juan is Spanish for John, isn't it? Si, senora. Will you hold on a moment, please? <laughs> Brown John. <clears throat> Are you a relative? No, no, just a friend. Well, I'm afraid I have some rather bad news for you. You mean Mr. Brown is worst? 
He had a heart attack during the night. <laughs> oh, Santa Mar. You mean Mr. Brown is dead? <laughs> Good morning, Sydney. Good morning, Miss Courtney. It's very sad about Mr. Brown, isn't it? Terrible. I thought you might have gone to the funeral this morning. No. I got far too upset. I know what you mean. It's so tragic. Taken so young. It's terrible. alive. Uh, then whose funeral have the students gone to? Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Brown is trying to get through to us. I heard it as well. <laughs> you need to stop the thing. Hey! It's the bus! Yes. Praise be to Allah. Carol oh, Brad. You're not dead. Thank you. Are you? Who is the man in coffin? Well, I expect it's another Mr. Brown. We must be making big celebration. Yeah, why we not go to the pub? Lighty yeah. hall? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll second that. Ah, hey, I push you. Hey, no, I push a professor. Oh, I, I push, push, push you. I push him here and I push him. Go away. Hey, you don't mean that. You want a bet? Hey, we bring you some flowers. Oh, Juan, you shouldn't have spent money on flowers for me. I not spend money. We already bought them for your funeral. <laughs>
tell you something. No, 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 no. no. Oh, no, keep no, going, no, everybody. Uh, Our troubles are over. <laughs> you are emigrating. <laughs> Excuse me if I'm not the laugh. We are going to make everybody rich. Hey, I am like very much to be rich. This time next week, we could have half a million pounds. We rob Bunko. <laughs> ah, we win on the football pools. Ah, you never win on them. Sure. We have a good system. All we got to do is pick 11 matches. That gives us 220 lines. Well, we're bound to get one line, right? All right. How much needs we pay? 20 p's each. OK, I pay. Now pick the match you think's going to be a scoring draw. OK. Two Munter. Two. Ah, Derby v Queen's Park. Derby Queen's Park. Okie koki, next to customer. Uh, please, please. Okay, pick the match. Arsenal. Arsenal. No, no. <laughs> Fulham will uh, Tokyo. Okie koki. <laughs> Who's next? That's my money. Okay, pick it up, match. Hartlepool v. Port Valley. OK, OK. And the next one. Yes, please. My scoring match being Liverpool v. the city of Bristol. Liverpool <laughs> <laughs> v. the city of the Bristol. OK, who's the next? What's going on here? We are doing the football poodles. <coughs> you want to join in, Provisori? Only 20p. You could win a half a million. I could also lose 20p. What's it at 20p? Well, it may not mean much to you, but it does to me. I don't exactly earn a fortune teaching English. Why not? You ask for a lift up. <laughs> <laughs> More money. You mean a rise? Arsenal. <laughs> Forget the 20p's. We give you the free line. Now, just yeah. pick at the match. Yeah, well, supposing we pick at the match later, all right? Right now, we've got work to do. Now, come on, in your places. Oh, oh, yeah. Settle down. <laughs> right, now, tonight, we are going to concentrate on the art of conversation, all right? We'll start with you, Ali and Anna. Do you come out here, please? Now, you have never met before, and you are sitting on a park bench, Anna, uh, 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 when along comes Ali and sits next to you and starts a conversation, all right? Carry on. <clears throat> uh, good morning, lady. <laughs> Come along, Anna, say something. I never speak to strange men in the park. <laughs> Very commendable, but let us assume that this time you do. Start again. Good morning, lady. Good morgen. <laughs> it is being a very nice day. Yeah. Anna, this is supposed to be a conversation in English. Up to now, you've said good morgen and yeah. Could you try and speak in English, please? Start again, Anna. Uh, good morning, lady. Good morning. Oh, blame me. <laughs> It is being a very nice day. Yes. It is nice weather. Yes. It was also very nice weather yesterday. Yes. Perhaps it will also be nice weather tomorrow. Yes. Or perhaps it could be raining. Yes. Perhaps it could be raining. Yeah, all right, that'll do. Thank you, both of you. Absolutely scintillating. Right, Juan. Yes, senor. Would you come out, please? Right, now, you are sitting in a restaurant. A uh, Spanish restaurant. Yes, if you like. <laughs> when uh, Suli enters. Uh, pardon, senor. What is a Chinese girl doing in a Spanish restaurant? <laughs> well, she likes Spanish food. Ah, it's all right. Right, the restaurant is crowded, but there's an empty seat at Juan's table. All right? <laughs> Juan, what are you doing? Uh, I was leaning on the table. Yep. Yeah. Carry on, Suli. <laughs> Excuse, please. This seat taken? No, you sit. You sit. Thank you. Allow me to introduce myself. Jung Su Lee. My name is Carlos. Juan, what do you mean, Carlos? Eh, uh, I never give my right name when I pick <laughs> Carlos. <laughs> Plenty smart, You're eh? not supposed to be picking her up, just having a conversation. Go on, go on. Uh, you want a drink? I don't drink. Bad for Riva. Uh, cigarette? I don't smoke. Bad for rungs. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you're not married, eh? You are very loo. Oh. Hey, what's the matter with you? I just make a joke? What do you want to talk about? We could discuss whether the dictatorship of proletariat is better than the dictatorship of bourgeois capitalists. We can't do that. Why not? 
Because I don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> Sully, does every conversation have to be a political rally? <clears throat> Chairman Mao, he's saying we must try and use every opportunity to spread socialist doctrine amongst unrighteous people. Yeah, well, I'd be grateful if you would keep Chairman Mao out of the classroom, all right? Thank you both of you, all right? Now, um, Max and Daniel. Would you come out, please? Right, now let us assume that you're at a party and you've just been introduced to Danielle. Now use your imagination and uh, make a conversation. <laughs> Hello, beautiful. Hello, gorgeous. Hey, uh, this party not very good, eh? Uh, why not we go uh, somewhere else? D'accord. Let's go back to my place. Okay. <laughs> this is a short conversation. Mr. Brown, there's an old geezer wants to see you. He's sitting in the canteen. What does he want? I don't know, but he said he's very urgent. Oh, very well. Right. While I'm away, you can do some exercises. Hey, I know plenty of exercise. Uh, one, three, <laughs> four, six, seven, nine, six. Oh, uh, not those sort of exercises. Exercises from your books, page 120. Sorry, wrong number. <laughs> Would you like another cup of tea, Mr. Um, uh... English. No, thank you. Oh. Oh, you know, you do remind me of my husband. Really? Yeah, just before he died. Ah, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mr. Brownstone. Brown? Uh, Mr. Brown, yes. I'm English. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> no, my name is English. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, can we sit down? Well, I'm rather busy. Oh, I, I will keep you a moment. After all, this is a rather confidential matter. Hmm? <laughs> there you are. My card. Oh, the English School of Languages, Principal H.C. English. That's right. Now then, I shall come straight to the point. Good. No use beating about the bush. No. After all, procrastination is a thief of time. Absolutely. Never put off till tomorrow what you could do today. Very true. Now then, where was I? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Browner. Brown! 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 Yes. Well, now, you see, our teacher of English for foreign students has left us rather hurriedly, and I want you to take his place. Oh, you're offering me a job. Your name was given to me by one of your former students, Miss Svensson. Ah, yes, Ingrid. Ingrid. Uh, yes, but I like to start. <laughs> Uh, as quickly as you can. Well, I haven't said I'll take the job yet. The starting salary is 5,000 a year, rising to 7,500 by yearly increments. That's very generous. The labourer is worthy of his hire. What do you say? Well, I'd, I'd like to think it over, if I may. Very well. Don't keep me waiting too long. I need to know by tomorrow. Goodbye, Mr. Um... Brown. I know, I know. <laughs> Use, Mr. Brown. Oh, on the contrary. I've just been offered a job at 5,000 a year. That's nice. Hey, are you going to take it? Well, I said I'd think it over. I mean, after all, money isn't everything. Oh, that's true. There's such a thing as job satisfaction. Yeah. That's like something money can't buy. No. So I've decided what to do. You're going to stay here? No, I'm taking the job. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving? Yeah, I'm sorry to spring it on you like this, Miss Courtney, but it's uh, too good an opportunity to miss. I see. And when do you propose to take up this new position? Well, he wants me to start right away, so I thought I'd report to him first thing in the morning. That doesn't give me much time to find a replacement. Yeah, I know, but I can't afford to wait and risk losing the job. Very well, Mr. Brown. You have obviously made up your mind, and I wish you every success. Thank you. I hope you'll be happy, but I think I can safely say you won't find another principal like me. I'm sure I won't. <laughs> right, time's up. Uh, would you leave your books on my desk? Uh, but before you go, I've got something to tell you. 
I shan't be teaching you after tonight. Oh, oh Master G. Deary me, have you got the bag? The bag? <laughs> yes, please. Has Mrs. Coldrini given you the bag? <laughs> you mean the sack? Jelly good. <laughs> so I shall be leaving for a better job. Ah, no. Oh, no. no. We are being very sad to be losing you. I shall miss you very much. We shall all miss you. Eh, maybe you change your mind, eh? Oh, I must strike while the iron is hot. Holy ravioli. <laughs> You're gonna get a job in a laundry. <laughs> Just using a figure of speech. I should be doing the same job, but at a commercial school, for a lot more money. Well, come along. Thank you, everybody. Well, I hope you have had a much luck. Thank you, Giovanni. <laughs> oh. Amigo. The luck again. May your days be filled with happiness. Auf Wiedersehen. Anna. <laughs> May Allah watch over you. You too, Ali. <laughs> Jory good rat, comrade Brown. <laughs> Au revoir, Monsieur Brown. Et bonne chance. <laughs> Show long, Mosh. <laughs> Goodbye, Mosh. Jimila. <laughs> Macho. Success. I'm Jeremy Brown, English teacher. You offered me a job yesterday. Oh, of course you are. Do forgive me. I'm terribly sorry. I've got such an awful memory for faces, Mr. Brownlow. Brown. Uh, Brown. 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 Yeah. Uh, please. <laughs> Quite all right. But <laughs> well, when shall I start? Start what? Teaching. <laughs> I'm accepting the job. Oh. Uh, have you left your other position then? Well, yes. I gave him my notice last night. Did I? Did I? I suppose unfortunate. Why? Well, you see, we don't need anybody now. The chap that left came back again. Good, isn't it? <laughs> not for me, it isn't. No. Oh, no, no, I suppose not. No, no, I... Why, dear, what will you do now, Mr. Brown? Stop. Brown! Brown, Brown, Brown! Well, there's only one thing I can do. Uh, what's that? Which way's the nearest unemployment exchange? <laughs> Mr. Brown, what are you doing here? I thought you'd left. They were sent I, but the job was already taken. Ah, what'd you do? Well, I went to the unemployment exchange and told them that I had uh, five A levels and was a BA Oxon. What'd they say? Offered me a job as a road sweeper. <laughs> here, have you ever worked on the market? Try to get your job, you know. Yeah, doing what? Oh, I, I, are you any good at the bunny? Uh, what bunny? The bunny rabbit, the rabbit and pork, the spill, the chatter. Oh, the talk? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, what would I have to rabbit about? Oh, uh, well, look, hold that and I'll give you a rough idea. <laughs> now, you've got a stall in the market, you see, and you've got the people around you. And you say, now, come here, I'll tell you what I'm prepared to do. I've got three little lots here, and the gold you get in the chain worth 20 pounds. The gold bracelet worth 15 pounds. The gold earrings, don't they look nice? Don't they look nice? <laughs> you're willing to any jewelry shopping off the street that cost you 40 pounds. I'm not asking you 40, 30, or even 20. A tenner would be a bargain. One price, one price only. Speak up, speak up, chop. Third come, third serve. A five of the lot. I'll take it. <laughs> no, I'm only demonstrating. Oh, sorry. What do you say? No, I don't think it's quite me somehow. You'll have to go back on the dole then, won't you? Well, I could ask Miss Courtney for my old job back. Do you think she'd give it to you? Oh, I'm sure she will, if I crawl enough. <laughs> 
Enter. Hello, Miss Courtney. Mr. Brown, this is a surprise. Did you forget something when you left last night? No, no. And then to what do we owe the honour of this visit? Well, I, uh, uh, you've done something to your hair. My hair? Yes, looks different somehow. Much more feminine. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, if you don't mind me saying so, you really look quite attractive. <laughs> All right, Mr. Brown, what are you after? Pardon? Well, I'm wise enough to know when I'm being softened up. Uh, what is it you want? Oh, a reference, no doubt. Well, not exactly. Well, what is it then? Well, I'll come straight to the point, Miss Corby. Good. I thought about this new job last night, and I suddenly realised that money isn't everything. Really? After all, you can't buy happiness. So you've decided not to take this job? You're very perceptive. I tried to telephone you earlier today to ask you to bring back the register. Mr English said that you weren't there because there hadn't been a vacancy after all. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so now you've come crawling back to me, expecting to be reinstated. Yeah, well, I would be grateful. I mean, after all, it'd be much easier on the students. I mean, easier all round, really. Do I quite agree? Oh, good. Except for one thing. I have already engaged a new teacher. <laughs> no, 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 I'm wondering what the new teacher will be like. He won't be as nice as Monsieur Brown. Maybe we are we have lady teacher. Hey, listen, everybody, the boss is back. Ah. Mr. Brown, no? That's right. Sid just told us he didn't get the job. He can be coming back here. Uh, it's too late. We got a new teacher. If new teacher leaves, Professor can come back. How can new teacher leave? We fix it. <laughs> we all act as stupid. <laughs> New teacher thinks, why not teach these people? I leave. That's a good idea, amigo. We all give stupid answers. For you, that is easy. <laughs> sit down, everybody. Hi, up, sit down. This is your new teacher, Mr. Wilkins. And Mr. Wilkins, these are your students. Yes. Anna Dima, Anna Schmidt, Juan Cervantes, Chung Su Lee, Ranjit Singh, Giovanni Capello, Daniel Fab, Maximilian Papandreas, Jamila Sin, Ranja, and Taro Nagazumi. You'll soon get to know them. <laughs> Any problem, I shall be in my office. Right. I do hope we're all going to get on together extremely well. <laughs> now, you. Can you tell me how far you're up to? Por favor. How far <laughs> are you up to? Ah, si, si. Ah, uh, I am, uh, uh, five feet, eleven inches. No, 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 not how tall you are. Five feet, eleven inches. <laughs> Never mind. I'll soon find out what progress you've made so far. Now, you, what is the feminine of Drake? Miss Drake. <laughs> really? You, spell cough. K-O-F-F. -F. <laughs> what is an apostrophe? According to the New Testament, there are 12 apostrophes. <laughs> Peter, Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon, and Judas. <laughs> you, give me a sentence using the word defer. Minks are bred for defer. <laughs> You, explain the meaning of the phrase, to bury the hatchet. To chop someone's head off. <laughs> you, complete the following proverb. People who live in glass houses should get undressed in the dark. <laughs> explain what is meant by a circular letter. Most well, certainly, a circular letter is the letter O. <laughs> you, hustle. Uh, oh, <laughs> what is an aspirate? Uh, it is a tablet. So. You take it when uh, you have cold. <laughs> oh, you, could you please, please tell me what is the opposite of a coward? A bullard. <laughs> well, I am appalled at your lack of knowledge of the English language. In all my years as a teacher, I have never come across a class as ignorant as you are. Well, no wonder your former teacher left. It's enough to make any ordinary man leave. However, I am no ordinary man. I shall look upon this task as a personal challenge. 
I'm going to teach you all English if it takes me a lifetime. Now. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Brown. What are you doing here? I'm not quite sure. Miss Courtney telephoned me this morning and said she wanted to see me. You don't know what it's about, do you? Got no idea. Oh, no. Why don't you go in and ask her? It's just good. <laughs> Anton? You uh, wanted to see me, Miss Courtney? Oh, yes, Mr. Brown. Are you still jobless? Yeah, I'm afraid so. I was offered another job this morning, but I turned it down. <laughs> Not enough money? Well, no, the money was all right. On the face of it, it seemed quite attractive. Um, office, virtually my own boss. Uh, just didn't like the idea of working below ground. <laughs> On the underground? No, gentlemen's conveniences. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, would you like your old job back? Yeah, but I... I thought you'd already offered it to someone else. Well, I had, but he telephoned this morning to say that uh, he had left. Oh. Did he give any reason? None whatsoever. Well, Mr. Brown, I suggest you start immediately. Ah, oh, right, Miss Corby. On a temporary basis, of course. <laughs> the boss is coming. Eh? Nice to see you, boss. Three hooray hip hips for the boss. Hooray! <laughs> Thank you very much. It's all right. We are getting you back. What do you mean, you are getting me back? Well, it's a like it is, Professori. We have the good news and we have the bad news. All right. What's the good news? Oh, blimey. <laughs> we are getting rid of Mr. Willikins so that you can be returning. You mean he left because of your behavior? Not so. Last night, a Monsieur English came to find you. Oh, from the commercial school? Yeah, he's wanting to tell you he has a job for you after all. Oh, well, that is good news. But now we come to the bad news. <laughs> we are be tell Mr. English you are not be one job with him. So instead, he give job to Mr. Wirikins. Hey, we plenty smart, huh? <laughs> oh, yes, plenty. Professori, we have the more good news and the more bad news. All right, go on. First, the more good news. We got eight scoring drawers on the football pools. <laughs> the bad news is... Uh, we forgot to post the coupon. <laughs> yes, well, I've got some good news and some bad news for you. Firstly, the good news. Now that I'm back, I'm staying. Hey! And now for the bad news. From now on, you get extra homework every night. Oh. Oh. <laughs> some coffee, Miss Courtney. I shan't be wanting it this morning, thank you, Gladys. I have to be at the court in half an hour. Tennis court? Magistrates. <laughs> oh, my goodness, what have you done? Well, I haven't done anything. I am on the bench. I am a JP. Oh, 
Very nice. Any juicy bits? I beg your pardon. Well, you know, like you read in the Sunday papers, husband finds wife in bed with lover. No, Gladys. Just the usual amount of football hooligans and drunk and disorderly, that sort of thing. Enter. Thank you, Gladys. <laughs> I brought the stockroom keys back. Well, you better hang on to them, Sydney. I shan't want them today. She's in court. Court what? <laughs> court. Magistrate's court. Go on. Have you been nicked? Nicked? I've got a friend of mine to defend you, and if he can't get you off, he'll bang a few quid to the JP. Most of them are bent. <laughs> I am a JP. <laughs> I was only joking. <laughs> and I sincerely hope you were. I'll see you two tomorrow. Yeah, well, don't be too hard on anyone, will you? Remember, a person is innocent until he's proved guilty. Yeah. Well, I have often thought that should be the other way round. Well, you should know best. <laughs> oh, I'd hate to come up before her. Me neither. With people like her on the bench, no wonder they demolish the death sentence. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Case number one has been put back until after lunch. Oh, very well. Let's get on with it. Call case number two. Call case number two. Magistrate. Oh, blimey. We are being in luck. We are born to be getting off scotty free. Silence in court. I take it you know these people, Miss Courtney? I most certainly do. Well, are you sure you won't be prejudiced in their favour? If I am prejudiced, it certainly won't be in their favour. <laughs> Inspector, isn't it a little unusual for the police to bring so many defendants before the bench at one time? The dock seems a little overloaded. Uh, the case is rather unusual, madam. The accused, though acting individually, did in fact commit the offences collectively. <laughs> I see. What are the charges? Miss Chung Su Lee and Mr. Taro Nagazubi inciting a riot. I demand diplomatic immunity. Silence. <laughs> Mr. Giovanni Cupello and Miss Daniel Favre disturbing the peace. Mr. Ranjit Singh and Mrs. Jamila Ranjak causing an affray. Please, I'm not understanding what he's meaning. And I am not understand also, Master Ji. But he's reading out the charges. You mean we are having to pay for being here? <laughs> More than likely. Will you please be quiet? Sorry. Mr. Ali Nadim and Miss Anna Schmidt causing a public nuisance. Mr. Juan Cervantes and Mr. Maximilian Papandrios assaulting a police officer. He assault us first. She. He hit my fist with his jaw. <laughs> Another remark like that, I shall hold you in contempt. Por favor. Speak when you are spoken to, Juan. Sorry, wrong number. Carry on with the charges. That's all. Well, what about Mr. Brown? Oh, I'm not charged with anything. And what are you doing in the dock? I've come here to speak on their behalf. He's our mouthpiece. Sure. <laughs> He's going to spring us. <laughs> you see, Miss Courtney... Stop! You must come down onto the floor of the court if you wish to address the bench. Oh, right. Uh, you see, Miss Courtney... Stop! Are... I am not Miss Courtney. <laughs> Funny. She looked like Miss Courtney. <laughs> you will kindly address me as Your Honour. Sorry, Miss Courtney. Uh, Your Honour, but there are mitigating circumstances, and I'm sure that when you've heard what these students have to say, you will decide to act leniently. Well, we'll see about that after we have heard the explanation. Yes. Well, it all happened last Friday evening after class. As part of their homework, I decided to give the students various tasks to perform, things to do, places to visit. Suli and Tara, would you tell the court what happened in your case? Take the stand, please. Take the book in your right hand and read what's on the card. Yes, sir. I swear by almighty God that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. 
Take the book in your right no. hand. Are you saying that you are not going to tell the truth? Republic of China not brief in Christian religion. What do you believe in? Chairman Mao. Very well. Do you swear by Chairman Mao that the evidence you give should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? In Democratic Republic of China, there's no loom for eyes. Truth is absolute. So say Chairman Mao. I think we can accept that as an affirmation. <laughs> Proceed. Task Mr. Blount allocate to Talo and me is visit Speaker's Corner in Hyde Park to observe Olitus. I say to you again, ladies and gentlemen, do not be deceived by assurances of a so-called change of attitude in China. They are still governed by dictators. Yeah. The people are still oppressed. Yeah. Yeah. Lavish! It is not <laughs> <laughs> China is still an aggressive nation. It is Western imperialists who are aggressors. China is still a free democracy. No, who's talking rubbish? You are. If you don't like it over here, get back to where you came from. Right. Don't speak like that to my friend, though. You are ignorant capitalist ratty, you are. Now, calm down. If you wasn't a lady, I'd thump you. I have news for you. I am no lady. <laughs> you see, it was political act of self-defense. Not our fault. You may stand down. Who's next? <coughs> Mr. Giovanni Capello and Miss Favre. Take the book in your right hand and read what's on the card. Not the likely. <laughs> Why not to swear on a Protestant Bible? We are Catholics. I swear by the Pope. Give him a Catholic Bible. Okay, okay. <laughs> I promise I'm going to tell all of the truth. Me too. Carry on. <laughs> Your Honor. <clears throat> It's a like it is. Mr. Brown asked us to visit television studios to see how television programs are made. Oi. Yes? Where do you think you're going? We go to have a look around. You're not allowed in here without a pass. But I'm sure you can look the other way. Rules are made to be broken, no? <laughs> not by me, no. But it's for our own work. Sorry. What's that down there? Where? Come on. <laughs> hey! What do we do now? We have a look around. Don't worry, nobody's gonna find hey, us here. Hey. Santa Maria! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Quick, in here. Good afternoon, and welcome to another edition of World of Sport. This afternoon, on our search for sporting action... Hey, hey. <laughs> but which way do we go? Do you mind? I'm on air. Hey, I've seen you someplace before. <laughs> you don't have to look like that David Dickey. Dickey <laughs> Davis, you spaghetti. Ah, oh, that's right. Look, I am Dickey Davis, and I'm trying to do a program. I'm very sorry about that, but when the programme is live, anything can happen, can't it? As I was hey, saying... David, can oh. I have your autograph, please? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. My first guest tonight has flown across the Atlantic specially to be with us. I think uh, perhaps excuse he's best... <laughs> <laughs> hey! I know you! It's Sir Michael Parkington. <laughs> it's not. It's Eamon Andrews. Oh, sorry. Oh, I... oh, yes. oh, my God. Your Honor, I rest my bag. No, no. I told you about it. You rest your case. 
Okie cokey, I rest on my bag and on my case. Silence. And there is far too much levity in this courtroom. We will now take a short break, and when we come back, I shall hope for a little more respect. Otherwise, the court will be clear. <laughs> Mr. Singh and Mrs. Ranja. What do you swear on? I never swear. <laughs> it's against my religion. Here's the mean swear on holy book. Thousand apologies. I'm swearing by the Guru Granth Sahib. May Guru Granth Sahib Jai Dishon Kha Ke Ke Jo Bhi Ma Kenga Sat 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 No, I am be swear by Almighty God. I am be swear to tell the obsolete truth and nothing but the obsolete truth. <laughs> Carry on. Master G is ask us for our homey work to be take boat on River Thames. And we comply. Hmm. When the weather is fine, then you know it's a sign for messing about on the river. If you take my advice, there's nothing so nice. Well, that's very simple. It's forward to go forward and backwards to go back. What about if you want to go sideways? <laughs> I think I am busy, sir. You really want to hire this boat? Most definitely. All right. Switch on. I'll cast off. Don't put it in gear until I tell you to. <laughs> Take the book in your right hand and read what's on the card. Por favor. <laughs> we tell the truth. Si, si, si. I tell you what happened. No, no. Mis I tell. No, 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 no. I speak good, better English. No. Mr. I speak better English than you speak better English. Eh, si me lo sé. Eh, no, me echa la hora, no tenía más Tell the court what happened, Mr. Cervantes. Si, señora. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Brown, he tell us to go and see the wax wax. Wax wax. <laughs> he say, I tell, not you. Okay. So we go to Madame Tussaud. <laughs> Take the photo of me with the British royal flag. Okay. Which way we go? We ask where we find the royal flag. We want the queen. Hey, what's the man? You're dead. He's a wax man. <laughs> oh, Looks like a real man. Hey, look. Here's another. Ah. He don't look. Very nice. No. He looks like a dumb. 
How they get this stuff? That's good. Fun of yum. <laughs> it's a spick and dummy. Can I help you, gentlemen? Yeah. You're a real man. Yes. Including the moustache. And we are looking for the royal family. Hey, I'm going to have the picture taken with the queen. Armina. Members of the public are not allowed to touch the exhibits. Eh, it's all right. We not tell nobody. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, you are too late. We are about to close. You will find the exit that way. <laughs> we better go. Now, I want the picture with the Queen and Prince Philip. We go that way. <laughs> ah, there they are. Ah, I go front, you take picture. Okay, but be quick. All right. Watch the bird. I'll just check in here. You may stand down. Mr. Nadim and Miss Schmidt. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And what about you? Oh, blame me. <laughs> I'm also swearing, but by the Holy Quran. I will not say anything in the Quran, but I will not say anything in the Quran, but I will not say Oh, yes. <laughs> Proceed, please. Jolly good. <laughs> Teacher is tolding us to be visiting... I am not tolding you anything, Ali. Oh, yes, please. I was being there when you were tolding us. There's no such word as tolding. Teacher is right. Thank you, Anna. Mr. Brown told us. <laughs> the past participle of the verb to tell is told. Mr. Brown, may I remind you that you are not here to teach English? Yes, Miss Courtney. Uh, sorry, your honor. Carry on, Mr. Nadi. Jelly good. <clears throat> Mr. Brown told us to be visiting the zoo. We saw all the animals, and on the way out, Ali decided he wanted to ride on the elephant. <laughs> See the elephant with a long trunk swinging, the great big ears and a long trunk swinging, sniffing up the peanuts and a long trunk swinging. We can stay all day. We're going to the zoo, zoo, zoo. How about... Excuse me, please. We are wanting to have a ride on elephant. Ah, gee. <laughs> Would you like a hearty dog? What? You are saying your cheese is hard, so I'm offering you my hearty dog. <laughs> Why don't we start again? We would like a ride on the elephant. Well, you can't. Why not? You are not allowed on the elephant without a keeper. We are wanting to be riding on elephant, not the keeper. <laughs> I've no idea. You go for keeper. No, I go for fun. You come to, to, to. We're going to the zoo, zoo, hello, zoo. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, it is an Indian elephant. How do you know that? It has a bigger head and longer nose. Oh, blimey. It is pinching my heart. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, but. What are you but, doing? We are going to be riding on elephant. No, we wait for keeper. Don't worry. I know everything about elephant. Please be getting up. It may be dangerous. Oh, no. Indian elephants are most peaceful people. Oh. We are only going to be sitting. Climb, please. Climb. Hey. Come, Ali. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're very high. Oh, yes. When I was being a little boy in Delhi, I used to ride elephant. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. To be going on left side, you are pulling left ear. Yeah. To be going on the right words, you're pulling right here. And to be stopping, you're pulling both oh. ears. <laughs> what about starting? 
To be starting, you bang on head. Unfortunately, we are still sitting on it. <laughs> you may stand down. Mr. Brown, have you anything to say before I give judgment? Yes, Miss Corby. Uh, yes, Your Honour. I beg the court to show clemency in this case. These poor unfortunate people are guests in our country. They have journeyed from their native lands to our shores to learn our mother tongue. Why? because they admire our English way of life with its long tradition of hospitality, free speech, justice, and above all, fair play. They have committed no offense in their eyes. They were merely carrying out their duties as they saw them. I mean, one only has to look at them to see that they are not criminals. <laughs> I'm sure the court will find them innocent. If anyone is guilty, it is I. Bravo! Thank you, Petrocelli. <laughs> Well, having regard to your impassioned plea for mercy, the court tends to agree with your remarks. The accused are more misguided than mischievous. Therefore, the court finds the defendants not guilty. <laughs> However, the court agrees with Mr. Brown that if anyone is guilty, he is. To have sent out these poor, unfortunate students on such foolhardy errands is highly irresponsible. It is a pity that the court cannot punish you. But be warned, Mr. Brown, if you ever come before this bench again for whatever reason, you will be severely dealt with. The court will adjourn. Your car, sir? Yes. Having trouble with your memory, are you, sir? Pardon? Your road tax disc has run out, sir. Ah, well, I'm sure I've applied for it. What's going on, Constable Jones? Another tax dodger, madam. Really? <laughs> well, while you're at it, Constable, why don't you check his lights and his tires? How about his insurance? I shall be sitting again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Sydney. Oh! <laughs> a 
Hello, Miss Courtney. Did you want me? No, I was just giving your office floor a brush out. How very kind. Good evening. Ah, oh, Mr. Brown, just the man I want. You lucky devil. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Would you step into my office? Yeah. Not you. <laughs> oh, Mr. Brown. Oh. After you, Miss Courtney. Did you have a nice weekend? Oh, very pleasant. I spent two days in lieu. Huh? In lieu of what? <laughs> oh, in lieu in Cornwall. Oh, yeah. I have brought something for you. Here. It's a tape recorder. Yes. Oh, well, that's very kind of you, Miss Courtney. Thank you very much. I didn't expect you to buy me anything. Well, that's good, because I haven't. Oh, but I thought this was a... That tape recorder belongs to the music class. Oh. I thought it might be a good idea if you used it to try to improve your student's elocution. Oh, yes, that is a good idea. How does it work? It is self-explanatory, Mr. Brown. Stop, start, wind, rewind, record. Oh. Shouldn't there be a microphone? It is fully built in. Oh, fully. <laughs> uh, when you have finished it, perhaps you would return it to the music class? Yes, yeah, certainly. You may go. Thank you. <laughs> pompous old twit. <laughs> that old hen, she's such a pompous old twit. <laughs> Haven't you a class to go to? Yeah, I was just going. Oh, just one moment. Something the matter? Yes, it's still switched on. Oh, my, <laughs> my God! <laughs> I do hope you weren't being indiscreet. No, no, of course I, I never said anything, did I, Sid? No, not a dicky bird. Never opened his normal shop. Well, we'll see, shall we? I think I'll go and sweep the floor. Yes, I... Stay where you are. Now, let's see what we can hear. When you have finished with it, perhaps you would be kind enough to return it to the music class? Yes, certainly. You may go. Thank you. Here we are, that's it, there's no more. No, definitely no more. Just a moment. Pompous old twit. She's <laughs> <laughs> a pompous old twit. I see. I am a pompous old twit, am I? That wasn't you. Really? Good Lord, no, was it, Sid? No, no, we should never hold in. Yeah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> then who was it? Uh, who? Well, it was... Yes, some, uh... it was the other old boy, like Gladys the tea lady. Yes, that's yeah. right, Gladys. I would hardly call Gladys pompous. Oh, wouldn't you? She can be very pompous at times. I see. Well, perhaps you would tell pompous Gladys that I am waiting for my coffee. Right. Uh, do you know my horoscope was right? I was forecast to clash with authority, ending in disaster. That wasn't disaster. Yeah, well, the night is still young. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. How are you liking it? You are very rude, Ranjit. Also, he's not be spell very good. Please, Ranjit, lap it off before Ari arrives. No. You make Ali very mad. I am not Gary. Yesterday, Ali is calling me a monkey face. <laughs> he shouldn't call you monkey face. Oh, thank you, Max. It's not your fault you look like that. <laughs> <laughs> Have I missed something funny? No, Professor. He's still here. <laughs> <laughs> you are liking flowers? Scusi? You are liking flowers. Answer yes or no. Well, sure, I like the flowers. Good. I'm sending some to your funeral. Benji, put your knife away. Giovanni, sit down. Come on. With you. What hope is there for a multiracial society if a handful of people can't sit down together for a couple of hours without coming to blow? Ah, uh, we only make it a joke. Yeah, well, in future, let's have no more jokes. They only seem to lead to arguments. <laughs> <laughs> who's responsible for this? Come along, I'm waiting. Right, and if the person who's responsible doesn't own up, you'll all stay behind and have extra homework. It was oh, my <laughs> I suggest you come out here, Ranjit, and rub it off before Ali comes in and sees it. Before Ali comes in and sees what? Nothing, um, Ali. <laughs> you are hiding something from me. Yes, please, I can see my name on blackboard. Oh, we were just about to rub it off. Who oh, play me? <laughs> I can be reporting you to the Monastery of Education. <laughs> Ministry. That also. I'm being surprised at you. Me? Writing in nasty things like that. I didn't write it. But you are standing with Chucky in hand. That is <laughs> circumstantial. Oh, no. That is most definitely Chucky. <laughs> it was already written before I arrived. Oh, ho. Then I am knowing who is writing it. It is Monkey Face. <laughs> <laughs> Kick you up the Kaiba. <laughs> 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 
sit down with Perry. Listen, if I have any more arguments, those persons responsible will be sent home immediately. Well, that's not said. And that goes for you, too. <laughs> no more arguments. Me? Never argue. Always argue. Never. Oh, yes, sir, you do. Oh, no, I don't. You're arguing now. Oh, you always argue. You're still arguing. <laughs> sit down. <laughs> right. Now, tonight, we are going to concentrate on your elocution. And heaven knows it needs concentrating on. Right. Now, this is a tape recorder. Eh? Hey, we're going to have the music while we work. <laughs> no, we're not. We're just going to have the work. I'm going to ask each of you in turn to say something into this, then we'll rewind it and play it back, and we'll correct any mistakes or mispronunciations you may make. Right? You first, Ellie. Jolly good. Uh, what shall I be saying? Well, just say anything at all that comes into your mind. Uh, anything at all that is coming into my mind. Um, uh, anything... That'll do. Yes, good. <laughs> That's... <clears throat> Here is the news. And this is Maximilian Andreas Archimedes Papandreou speaking it. <laughs> Today, we not have any news. Maybe tomorrow we have some. <laughs> Danielle? My name is Daniel Favre, 36, 21, 35. I am French, a pair, and I like all kinds of sports, in the doors and out of the doors. Thank <laughs> you, Miss France. Taron? Uh, also. <laughs> one oh, two oh, three oh, four oh. Good oh, good, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, then I'll be. <laughs> I'm speaking little poetries. When first I come to school, I am sit here like a fool. But Master G is teach me how to speech, and now I'm speak much more better. <laughs> and it didn't exactly rhyme. Master Shakespeare, no be rhyme. No, that's true. He doesn't, not always. Uh, Giovanni. Talent contest, just say a sentence or two. Okay, come. Yeah. <clears throat> I am in the English class to learn how to speak the English. Now I speak yeah, the English. And so you still have a lot to learn. <laughs> 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 Ranjit. Greetings and salutations to all my friends. Long life and much happiness be with you all. Very nice. I mean, I mean thank you. Well done. Suli, <laughs> and spare us the thoughts of Chairman Mao tonight, please. Thoughts of Chairman Mao wasted on crowds full of ignorant followers of imperialistic uh, policies of aggression. Uh, Only in China can flow democracy frolic. Yeah, thank you, Suli. <laughs> At least you're consistent. Uh, one. Uh, uh, I tell you a little story. Uh, my cousin from Madrid, his wife, she goes up to heaven. Spiritus Santo Domini. <laughs> and in the funeral, my cousin, he's very bad. So the priest, he come to him and say, please, my son, don't worry. In six months from now, maybe you find another beautiful senorita and you get married. My cousin, he said to the priest, six months, what am I going to do tonight? <laughs> Uh, I know plenty more. Yeah, we'll save them for tea break. Uh, all right. Right, now we'll rewind this, and you'll all hear how terrible you sound. <laughs> You've all got a long way to go. No, please. The landlord man I'm staying with is telling me I am speaking English much more better than what he's doing. Is he a Londoner? No, he's from Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't let it go to your head, Ranjit. Right, now. Pay attention. Uh, you first, Ellie. Jolly good. What shall I be saying? Well, uh, just say anything at all that comes into your mind. Anything at all that is coming into my mind. Um, I don't know. Who, who was that? Who was what? Who were you speaking to? That was you. You were pulling my leggy. <laughs> that was not me. 
That is a foreign sounding man. Exactly. That's how you sound. Oh, blimey. And all the time I'm thinking I'm sounding good like Sir Olivia Lawrence. <laughs> Lawrence Olivia. Yes, please. You're late, Hannah. Yeah. You feeling all right? Yeah. You do not sound all right. Look, if there's anything that's troubling no, no. you, can tell us we're your friends. That's all right. You let your hair down. Oh, blimey. How can she be letting her hair down when it is not up? <laughs> Let your hair down means to get everything off of the chest. Oh, you are be want her to take off her clothes. <laughs> Holy ravioli, these foreigners are all stupid. Come on, Anna, why don't you tell us what's the matter? For the last time, there's nothing the matter. You stop asking stupid questions. I'm perfectly all right. <laughs> I'm returning the tape recorder. I took it back to the music class, but they'd all gone home. Oh, very well. You can leave it there. Have you finished now? Yes, I've just got to give them their homework. I think I've got a slight problem. Oh? Your class is one big problem. Oh, I'm rather worried about Anna. In what way? Well, she burst into tears when she arrived, and so far, she's refused to say what's troubling her. Oh, dear, I do hope it isn't Miss Rowbottom all over again. Pardon? Needlework class, last term. Exactly the same symptoms. Weeping all over her embroidery. Refused to say why. Did you ever find out what, what was the matter? Oh, yes. Was it something serious? Well, as for Miss Rowbottom, she was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Anna, tell us what is the matter. I'm all right. How can you be saying you are all right when you have been crying buckets of water? <laughs> you could do nothing to help. How you know we can do nothing to help if you not tell us your problem? All right, I tell you. I have to go back to West Germany. Why you got to go back? My visa has all pairs kaput. <laughs> Finished. Two years is nearly up. Why not ask for extension? Won't work. I have a friend from East Germany, Eva, also au pair. She's been told she has to go back next month. You don't want to go back? No, I want to stay here. You can be staying with me. I hide you. Nobody will be knowing you are there. Thank you, Ranjit, but it won't work. Maybe you ask for diplomatic immunity. Ah, Suli is right. You can be a detector. <laughs> Defector. Ah, that is what I mean. People only defect from east to west. I'm already in the west. <laughs> go to Chinese embassy and join with the Republic of China in fight against Russian aggression. I want to stay here in England. I have answer. Become British citizen. How? Wife automatically take her nationality of husband. Hey, that taro's got something. You must get married with an Englishman. Hey, how about Sid? He is an Englishman. He's already being married. Yeah, we put something in the newspaper. Wanted, smart Englishman, plenty money, good looks. To marry beautiful German girl. Very sexy. I can't do that. Sure you can. When I marry, it must be Mr. Wright. Is he English? Who? This Mr. Wright. I haven't met him yet. Oh, blimey. How can he be marrying someone he haven't met yet? What Anna means, when she marries, she marries Mr. Wright, not Mr. Wrong. But he's be sound like a foreign person. <laughs> Who? Mr. Wrong. <laughs> Don't take any notice of them, Anna. What I mean is, when I get married, it must be for love. You don't have to live with him. All you gotta do is get a British passport by getting married. Then after a couple of months, you get a divorce. Who's gonna to agree to marry me for a couple of months? Hey, plenty people. Hey, now let's think of somebody. First, he's got to be English. Hey, that's right. Hey, I'm a little bit stupid. <laughs> somebody simple, huh? Who we can twist round a little finger? It is impossible. Uh, God will find a way. Tell me, where is God going to find a stupid, simple Englishman whom we can twist round our little finger? <laughs> Deo grazia. What was that one? Uh, sorry. 
Nothing, nothing. Right. Now, about your homework... Hey, professore, after class, we invite you to the pub for a drink, huh? Oh, that's very kind of you. Good. But I'm afraid I've got rather a lot of work to do. Oh, oh you please. must come, Bosch. We will be so disappointed if you do not come. Ah, oh, well, if you put it like that, how can I resist? <laughs> Now, don't forget, we give Mr. Brown plenty of the softer soap. Eh? What is the softer soap? The flannel. Soft soap, flannel. Is he going to have a bath? <laughs> I think he means we are going to be getting Mr. Brown in a good mood. Eh, why don't you speak the better English? Hey, I think they're coming back. Okay, Koki, okay. now not to worry, Anna. We fix you up, huh? There we are, then. Who ordered what sort? Uh, hey, Professori, you sit here next to Anna, huh? All right, thank you. Right, now, what should we drink to? To the future. To the future. Ah, salute. 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 You ever think about the future, Professori? Sometimes. You ever think of getting married, Bosch? Not really. Yeah, every man should be married. Especially to a woman. You <laughs> <laughs> are living by yourself? Men, no. Uh, not mean to live by bread alone. It is not natural. Men and women are made for each other. In China, we believe it is duty of every citizen to marry and produce brittle citizen. <laughs> you are missing a lot of nice pleasures. You're all very concerned to get me married off. We are only wanting you to be happy. Well, I'm quite happy as I am, thank you. What about you, Anna? You haven't said anything yet. Or are you against marriage? Oh, no, I would like to be married. I can't understand why she's not married already. Such a beautiful girl, eh, Professori? <laughs> Pardon? That Anna, she's a beautiful girl. One day, she's gonna make somebody a nice wife. She's a wonderful cook. Ah, good with the house cleaning. Kind-hearted. Very careful with the money. Always a top. Faithful. A man would be lucky to have such wife. I smell something fishy. Oh, blimey. It must be the curried prawn I'm having for lunch. <laughs> no, I'm not stupid. This has something to do with you, Anna. Am I right? Yeah. No. OK, we tell you the truth, Professori. Anna is in the big trouble. She, she's got to get married. <laughs> got to. Sure, Bosch. There is no other way. Miss Courtney was right, then. Miss Courtney knows about Anna? Well, she suspected correctly, as it turns out. Can you know me help her, Master G? Well, I'll do my best. Now, listen, Anna, do you know who's responsible for um, your condition? Yeah. Good. Who is it? The Home Secretary. <laughs> I beg your pardon? He is the one. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. You must be mistaken. No, he is the one. Well, I'm afraid he must have been lying. Who was lying? Well, this person who told you that he was the Home Secretary. What person? Well, the person who put you in the state you are in. Yeah, as a Home Secretary. <laughs> Couldn't have been the Home Secretary. It was. My girlfriend, Eva, is in the same boat with me. You mean, you mean your girlfriend is also in your condition? Yeah. Well, both of you were in the same boat with the Home Secretary? Yeah. I can't believe it. It's true. Eva has written to him, but he says her visa cannot be extended. Mine <laughs> also is ending. That is why I must get married with an Englishman. Just a minute. You mean you want to get married to stay in the country? Yeah. And for no other reason? Nine. Oh, well, thank goodness for that. <laughs> Okey cokey, when will we fix the wedding? There won't be a wedding. Oh, oh. Mr. Oh. Look, shh, look, and as much as I sympathize with your predicament, I can't marry you. Wouldn't be right. I may uh, be old fashioned, but I believe that people should marry for love and not merely as a matter of convenience. Yeah. You're right. Excuse me. I go to fix my face. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm surprised at you lot. Concocting a stupid idea like that. We only wanted to help Anna. We had to feel yeah. very sorry for her. Yeah, well, I'm sure you meant well. Oh, cheers. Come on, I'll get some more drinks now. 
poor Anna. She is going to be very sad. Yeah. We have to fix something, Giovanni. Hey, I got it, Maxi. <laughs> we get him drunk. Who <laughs> we get drunk? <laughs> Professore! Then tomorrow we not remember anything. And we tell him he agreed to marry Anna in here tonight in front of the witnesses. Anna will never agree to that. Sure she will. How you know? We get her drunk as well. <laughs> Feeling, Mr. Brown? Not particularly. Feeling under the weather? Just a bit. I had a bit too much to drink last night. Ah, buonasera, professore. Uh, really. How are you feeling, Mosh? Terrible. Last night you were a very happy man. Was I? I don't remember. <laughs> you not remember dancing on the table? <laughs> I didn't. You did? With Hannah? Just after you asked her to marry you. Uh, well, I'm afraid I'd... <laughs> what did you say I did? You ask Anna to marry you. Oh, no. Oh, yes. You say you felt sorry for her. You don't want her to go back to Germany, so you tell her you marry her. Are you sure? Positive. She's gonna fix the date tonight. You are a very lucky man. <laughs> congratulations. I don't want congratulations. Well, come to think of it, getting splices is more of an occasion for mourning. <laughs> I am not getting married. Well, they seem to think you are. Well, they are wrong, and I'm going to tell them so. Oh. Right, now, uh, in your places, everybody. Listen, please. I've got something to tell you about... Oh, I'm just the person I want to see. Mr. Brown, what can I say to you? Yeah, well, I'd rather you didn't say anything. What you did last night was wunderbar. Yeah, well, uh, it's about last night, Anna. I, I will say. never forget it. Uh, Anna, will you listen to me? But I cannot let you marry me. Yeah, well, I may have had one or two more... What did you say? I cannot let you marry me. There's no need. You, you mean you found somebody else? I telephone home secretary. He can't marry you. He's already got a wife. <laughs> about my visa, and he tells me I can stay because I'm part of Common Market. Hey! Oh, that is good news. But how can I thank you for your kind offer? Oh, well, that was nothing. Would you have actually done this thing? Well, yes, I mean, that's what friends are for. <laughs> Wunderbar. You will like Eva. Pardon? My friend. She is from East Germany, so she's not in Common Market. <laughs> for our school fate? Yes, just a few things my students brought in. What are these? 
please. <laughs> Seek underwear from Ranjit. Very oh, well. I suppose we can always ask the needlework class to sew up the flies and take a bit off the legs and put them in as a pair of football shorts. <laughs> Thoughts of Chairman Mao. No need to ask where that came from. <laughs> Danielle? Max. <laughs> I beg your pardon? He swears he found it in his pocket. There's no idea how it got there. <laughs> Likely story. Well, you better bring this along to my office later and we'll lock it up with all the rest of the stuff until Saturday. Very well. By the way, we've got one. One what? Don't you ever read the notice board? No, I don't get a lot. Obviously not. There has been a notice on the board for the past two weeks to the effect that we were hoping to get a celebrity to open our school fates. Oh, yes, I remember now. Who have you got? Robert Dougal. Oh. You remember? He used to read the news. Mm -hmm. I've got the art class making stickers with his name on to put across the posters. Buenas noches, senora. Ah, good evening, Mr. Cervantes. How's your English? Por favor. Your English? <laughs> your English. Me Spanish. <laughs> Sorry, I asked. <laughs> Where are the others? Everybody's coming front. Oh, I come first to talk how you say, uh, hombre to hombre. Man to man. Uh, so right. <laughs> I have met a beautiful senorita. No, no, no. I have met a beautiful girl. Uh, just like me. What's her name? No, no, no. I haven't met anyone. I was merely correcting your English. Uh, Spanish. Yep. Why? Uh, so right, so right. Well, I want to take Rita. That's her name. Away for the weekend holiday. But she lives with her mother, and she thinks maybe her mother not let her come away with me. What can I do? Well, why don't you ask her mother? I don't want to go away with her mother. <laughs> ask Rita's mother if you can go away with her on holiday. You think uh, she say yes? Well, I have no idea. What are your intentions? Por favor. <laughs> I'll be blunt. Are you hoping to get Rita into your room? No. Good. Not my room. Her room. <laughs> I got one room. Yeah, well, in that case, I can't help you. You just have to make your own decision. Uh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> Squeeze, please. I'm buying you a cup of tea. Oh, thank you, Ellie. I am buying you a chocolate biscuit. Oh, thank you, Ranji. Unfortunately, while I'm coming from the canteen, I am eating it. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. It's the thought that counts. Cheers. That's funny. What is it? This tea tastes like coffee. Excuse, please. It is tasting like coffee. <laughs> oh, blimey. That is explaining it. Explaining what? All the time I'm being in the canteen, I'm thinking my coffee is tasting like tea. <laughs> okay, well, never mind. I don't think I'll bother. Sit down, everybody. Right, we've still got a lot to do tonight. Um, Max. Would you put that cigar out, please? Sorry, boss. Right, now, before we go any further, I want to talk to you about the school fate. We are looking forward to it. Has he got someone famous to open it? Yes, Robert Dougal. Never heard of him. <laughs> I am BC him on television, Master G. Dougal, Florence and Zebedee. <laughs> Jamila, that's a doggy sort of Dougal. This is Robert Dougal, who used to be a newsreader, only he's retired now. Ah, oh, that's a no good. It's much better we get somebody who reads the news now. Like that Angela Ripoff. <laughs> Ripon. Scusi. I am liking the other one better. Annie Minnie. <laughs> Annie Minnie? She's reading the news on ITV. Anna Ford. Ronka. <laughs> Miss Courtney should have asked me. What for? You're not famous. No, but I'm a big friend of famous man on television. Another one of your fairies' tales. It's true. He's a big star of Celebrity Square Eyes. Uh, <laughs> it's not Bob Monkey House. <laughs> no, Willie Rushington. <laughs> no, the Cockney Man. But Arthur Mullard. Yeah, that's him. You know him well. Like a brother's. He would have been very happy to come and hope on the fate. <laughs> yes, well, it's too late now. We've already got Mr. Dougal. Now, what I would really like to know is what each of you are doing to help the fate to raise money. As you know, whatever we take goes to charity, so we obviously want to make as much as we can. With what we think of, we make a fortune. Good. 
Tell me what you're doing, Anna. Jamila and me, we bring some bathroom scales and we charge 2p for one weighing. Oh, that's an excellent idea. Ali, what are you doing? Oh, Ranjit and I are having a very good game. We are putting empty tins on a piece of wood. And for only 5p, you can be throwing three bollies to be knocking them down. <laughs> are there any prizes? Oh, yes, please. If you are knocking three tins down, you are winning one pound. I don't want to worry you, Ali, but you could lose money on that. Oh, no. You are being mistaken. Nobody is knocking down your one tin. Well, why not? We are nailing the tins to the piece of wood. <laughs> Very ingenious. Fun, what are you doing? Ah, I make plenty money with Daniel. Yeah, but doing what? Selling kisses. Oh, so we have plenty fun. How much are you selling your kisses for? 5p, 10p and 15p. But what's the difference? Ah. I show you. <laughs> For five p, you kiss on a one cheek. Mwah. For ten p, you kiss on the both the cheek. Mwah. Mwah. And for fifteen p. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I buy one of them fifteen p kisses. <laughs> I don't kiss you. Not the you, Daniel, you great Spanish paella. Yeah. You don't speak to me like that, you macaroni face. <laughs> right, little do, sit down and yeah, behave yourself. Yeah. That, that, that means you, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Right, um, Max, what have you in mind for Saturday? I tell you. <laughs> the boss asked me to tell him. We both tell him. Okay. We got a great idea. We got a great idea. Jammer jars. Jammer jars. <laughs> Jam jars? That's right. That's right. You're beginning to sound like an echo, Max. Do you have to repeat everything Giovanni says? Sorry, boss. First, we get the jam jars. First, we get the jam jars. <laughs> Please stop. Excuse me. We put the jam jars on the floor, and people try to throw 10p into a jam jar. If they miss, we keep the 10p. <laughs> and if they get one in? They win 5p. We can't lose! <laughs> Lemonade? Yeah, I don't think you'll get too many takers. Taro? Ah, uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> Are you doing anything? Yes, sir. Swapo, shopo. Swapo, what? Oh, swap, shop. Oh, yes. Mr. Good. Brown, Miss Courtney asked me to remind you to take your jumble in. Ah, thank you, Sid. I'll be there straight away. Right up. Right, I shan't be a minute. In the meantime, would you turn to page 130 and study the chapter on clause analysis? Uh, Max, would you clean the board? Okay, boss. Oh, no. Well, how awful. Are you sure? Oh, dear. Yes, well, thank you very much for telling me. Goodbye. Bad news? Oh, extremely. Mr. Dougal has flu. He is confined to bed. Oh, great. There goes our celebrity. Well, now what are we going to do? We've got no one to open the fates. Just a minute. Max. Max? The Greek? <laughs> but he's not a celebrity. No, 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 but apparently he knows Arthur Mullard. You know that TV chappy? Oh, yes, I think I know the one you mean. Speaks a bit like Sydney. <laughs> That's him. Oh, well, I suppose beggars can't be choosers. You think Mr. Papandreas could get this Mr. Mallard? Mallard? Yeah, Mallard, yes. Oh, why don't we go and ask him? What a good idea, Mr. Mallard. Right, Max, I'm on the word with you. <laughs> I, was, um, I was telling Miss Courtney that you know Arthur Muller. <laughs> well, you are, don't you? <laughs> Come on, speak up. Max, <laughs> Max how Sorry, many times do I have to tell you? Smoking is well, not enough. Well, never mind about that now, Mr Brown. You know this Mr Mallard really well, do you? We are just like that. He'd do anything for me. And you say he'd be happy to open our fate? Sure he would. Oh, I expect he's far too busy. Uh, for me, he'd drop anything. <laughs> Good. Then you can ask him to open our fate on Saturday. OK, I ask him to... <laughs> what? Uh, tell him to be there by 12 o'clock. Oh, we'll pay his expenses, of course. Oh, thank you, Mr Papadrius. You have saved the day. Now, come along, oh, Mr Brown. You've got to... <laughs> hey, what's the matter with you? You don't look very happy. I'm not very happy. Oh, blimey. I'm thinking he's dropping clinker. Fair is 
tails, Max? I did meet him. Once. When? Two years ago. <laughs> I shot next to him on a bus. <laughs> Have you heard the news? Eh? They've got Arthur Mallard. Why, what's he done? <laughs> For the fate. He's going to open the fate. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I think he's lovely. He's down at the red line over the weekend, pushing down a pile of pennies. Here? Yeah. Do you think I can get his autograph? You'd think to get somebody who could speak a bit better than him, wouldn't you? Well, what's the matter with the way he speaks? Speaks just like you. Yeah, no, he don't speak nothing like me. He's common. <laughs> To do, Max. What about? About your great big celebrity friend that you do not know. Nothing? Eh, you've got to do something, Max. Don't worry. I fix everything. Half the class, I go to the pub and telephone Miss Courtney. I tell her I just spoke to my good friend Arthur and he will be delighted to come and open the fate. Unfortunately, he's already engaged. Why don't you tell the truth? I don't think he knows what truth means. <laughs> we all been studying clause analysis? Yes. 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 Good, right, books away, please. Right, Ali, what is an adverbial clause? Oh, blimey. <laughs> Anybody? Ah. Right, well, then I suggest for your homework you all write out the chapter on clause analysis. Ah. Right, it's time to go now. See you all at the fete on Saturday. Max? Yes, Bosch? When will you know about Arthur Mullard? Uh, I go to phone him from pub now. Right. Oh, listen, Max. Uh, use Miss Courtney's phone. I'm sure she won't mind. Uh, it's okay, Bosch. Uh, much better high phone from pub. Yeah, well, will you let uh, Miss Courtney and me know as soon as you've spoken to him? Uh, we'll, we'll be here for a while, yeah? Okay. Oh, what do you think of that, then, eh, Greg? That's very nice, Sid. <laughs> you going in for modelling, Sid? No, just trying on the jacket. Miss Courtney said everything on the row was a fiver. Yeah, and very reasonable. Can I pay you now, cos I won't be at the fate? That day is not until after the pub shut. I don't see why not. If we can't have first choice, who can? Ah, well, there's my fiver. Right, I'll see Miss Courtney gets it later. No. <laughs> Will you be going to the fate, Gladys? Oh, I wouldn't miss Arthur Mullard for anything. Steady now, Arthur. We don't want it knocked down before Sunday. No, that wouldn't do, would it, Lil? Are you ready for another pint? Yes. I'll be back in a minute. I'm just going to the what's it. <laughs> <coughs> what you have it? Half a pint. Okay, okay. Two halves, please, miss. And I'll have a pint of pig's ear. <laughs> I thought you couldn't hear very well. Hey? He hears what he wants to. Two halves and some pig's ears, please. <laughs> hey, you better go phone Miss Courtney, huh? OK. <clears throat> Shed, you got Miss Courtney's number? Yeah. Well, what do you want it for? I got a phone about Arthur Mullard. Oh, oh, him? Yeah. Hey, do you know Gladys said I speak like what he does? Yeah, that... Hey, wait a minute. What? I got an idea. Yes, come over here. Bring the drinks, Giovanni. OK, OK. Will you uh, make me a favour, Shed? What sort of a favour? <laughs> What sort of a favour? It's worth a quid. Yeah? Who do you want knocking off? Uh, nothing. <laughs> no, no. I want you to telephone Miss Courtney and tell her that you are half a mullard and that you won't be able to come and hope on the feet. I thought you were supposed to have fixed all that. He's a not fix nothing. He doesn't even know this Arthur Mallard. Been opening your Norton South again, have you? <laughs> Will you do it? I'll go on for a quid, I'll do anyway. Hello? Miss Courtney, Maximilian Papandreou here. I got Mr. Mullard to speak with you. <coughs> Hello? <laughs> oh, good evening, Mr. Mullard. It is kind of you to open our fete on Saturday. Yes. That's what I was phoning you about. We can't pay you a fee, but we will pay your expenses, of course. 
say, uh, 50 pounds. 50 quid? <laughs> Cash. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, what time would you like me to be there? 2.30. 2.30? All right. I'll see you there on Saturday, 2.30. Tell our love. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you crazy? She's offered me 50 quid in cash. Wrong. She's offered that to half a mallard. Look, everybody thinks I speak like him. All I need is a bit of a disguise. And a big pair of stilts. <laughs> it's not gonna work, Sid. You're not the fool nobody's. No. Well, at least I tried to help, didn't I? Cheers. <laughs> I've got to get back. I'm up the creek without a paddle. <laughs> You're up at the creek without even a boat. Blue, blue. <laughs> Santa Maria. <laughs> What's the matter? Without turning around, who does a man at the bar remind you of? <laughs> How can I see without turning round? Just have it a quick look. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> the mallard! Nothing like him. Sure it is. I bet he fool a lot of people. Especially Miss Courtney. Hey, you might be right. Come on. Scusi. Yes. <laughs> Has anybody ever told you you look like Arthur Mallard? Arthur oh, who? <laughs> He's on television. I haven't got a television. Well, never mind. What are you doing Saturday afternoon? Why? We want you to impersonate Arthur Mallard. What for? It's just to open a fate. It's for a very good cause. Oh, I don't know. It's only for half a hour, and you'll be paid. How much? Two pounds fifty. <laughs> Two pounds fifty? Not bad, eh? Two pounds fifty for only half a hour's work. Very generous. Is that the sort of money this half of my old gets? Well, maybe he gets a bit more. Three pounds, maybe. <laughs> but you're just impersonating him. Do you think I could do it? Sure. You look a bit like him. Just speak a bit rougher. Rougher? <laughs> this Arthur Mallard, who is a very rough. Is he? He speaks just like a slob. A slob? <laughs> That's because he's thick. Right. I'll tell you something, Curly. What's that? I am Arthur Mallard. <laughs> That's good. He's getting into the parts. <laughs> Lou? Yes, Arthur. Tell these two books who I am. Arthur Mallard. <laughs> <laughs> Holy ravioli. <laughs> he really is Arthur Mallard. Slob, you call me. <laughs> he didn't mean it. Well, I'll tell you something that I mean. You're a loud mouthed, ignorant, spaghetti eating twit. <laughs> And it's only my good nature that stops me from punching your head in. Mr. Mullard? What? Does this mean you won't be coming to hope on our feet? You must be joking. Now look what you've done, you and your big mouth. Yeah, my big mouth? What about your big mouth? You started it. I tell you something. Harper is right. You are an ignorant spaghetti-eating twit. <laughs> Listen, Shorty, you get up off your knees and say that. Don't you speak to me like that. Well, don't you push on me like that. Ah, push off. <laughs> Is it raining in the office, Mr Brown? Hmm? No. No, I, I'm just checking it. I'm thinking of buying this. You know that it is unlucky to put up an umbrella indoors? Uh, well, it's a good job I'm not superstitious. Huh. How's that? Oh, very nice. Well, you can take those and hand them out. Right. Now, I think it's time that we were all going home. 
Well, that's funny. What is? I don't seem to be able to find my coat. Oh, I hope you look. What's it look like? <laughs> well, it's a sort of tweed mixture with fur around the cuffs. And uh, fur on the collar? Yes. Oh, dear. What's the matter? I thought everything on this rail was for the jumble sale. What have you done with my coat? <laughs> Fred, I sold it to Gladys for five pounds. <laughs> done? What? Yeah, well, don't worry, I'll get it back. Sid, what? Where's Gladys? She's gone. Oh, great. Where does she live? 29 Cornwall Terrace. Right. But wait a minute, if I know her, she'll be in the boozer. Finished! Good. Now, you'll be more careful next time. Here are your drinks. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, I shall have to go. Tell our little see ya. Cheerio, Tell our boys. Gladys. Hello, Gladys. Hello, Gladys. Oh, Gladys! <laughs> Mr. Brown? Where is it? Yes. Uh, where's what? The coat you bought. I need it back. It's Miss Courtney's. The coat? Yeah. Oh, well, I've sold it. Sold it? Oh, too. Yeah. Lil, behind the bar. Oh, excuse me. Yes, sir. What do you want? A lady's coat. <laughs> this may come as a shock to you, sir, but this is a pub, not a boutique. No, no, I mean the coat Gladys sold you. I must have it back. Bit kinky, are you? <laughs> Pardon? I've heard about fellas like you dressing up in women's clothes. I don't wear it. It's our school principles. I, I sold it to Gladys by mistake. Oh. Oh, all right. I'll go and get it. Thank you. Hello, Bosch. What are you doing? It's a long story. Here you are. Oh, thank you. And here's your uh, five pounds. Ten. <laughs> Pardon? I bought it for ten. Oh, great. Ten. Tar. Hey, you want a drink, Professor? No, thanks. No time. I've got to get this coat back to Miss Courtney. <laughs> Um, we might sell a few before the official opening. Hello, Bosch. Oh, Max, where's Arthur Mallard? Well, it's like this, Bosch. I, uh... Maybe he's had an accident. Tell him, Maxie. What's that? Tell me. Well, down in the basement, we have a gymnasium. Very nice. Hey, Mr. Brown. Uh, this is Mr. Brown, our English teacher. How do you do? And you know Max, of course. Yes. Very good of you to come. <laughs> well, it's all in a good cause, and I couldn't let a mate down, could I? <laughs> I told you he was a friend of mine. <laughs> well, come along now. It's time we opened the face. Oh, uh, Mr. Pavardress, I wonder if you'd be awfully kind and get my coat for me. I think it's hanging on a rail in the office. Oh, no. <laughs> now, what's the matter? It doesn't matter. See you at the fate. <laughs> <laughs>
What's going on? Oi. Hi, I turn it up. Hey, what's the matter, Sid? Walking all over my floor. Uh, what do you want us to do, fly? <laughs> I've just washed it. Eh, uh, not look very clean to me. No, it won't look when you lot trampling all over oh, it. Come along, you three, back to your desks. Come I'll on. With you in a minute. Oh, Get right. on. Hey, where you going? If you must know, I'm going to see a man about a dog. Ah, that's right. In you go. Right. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you to wash this floor. You did, but... but... do it immediately. It's disgraceful. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hi, everyone back? Well, I must say it's nice to see you all working hard for a change. Si, sí, senor Brown. We study for our eggs and ham. Eggs and ham? Si. Sí. In few weeks, we have eggs and ham. The word is exam. Ah, sorry, Rockdam. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Brown. Yes, Miss Courtney. I am extremely worried about the forthcoming examinations, particularly so far as your English class is concerned. Another failure would be unthinkable. Oh, don't worry, Miss Courtney. This time we will sail through. You had better. However, in order to reassure myself, I am visiting each class in order to check on its progress. I am just on my way to the woodwork class, but I shall be back in a few moments to give your students an oral test. And I do expect some correct answers. Well, we'll do our best. I just hope your best is good enough. <laughs> <laughs> do not worry, we will be surprising, Miss Courtney. Yeah, well, that's exactly why I'm worried. <laughs> Por favor. Yes, Ron. Eh, uh, did you buy the dog? <laughs> what dog? <laughs> the one you go see man about. <laughs> I went to spend a penny. Ah, very cheap dog. <laughs> All right. Now, I checked your homework last night, and you're still making far too many elementary mistakes. For example, Ali. Yes, please. The letters OHMS stand for On Her Majesty's Service, and not for only Hindus, Muslims, and Sikhs. <laughs> Jolly good. Fine. Yes, senor. A sex step has absolutely nothing to do with orgies. You're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. I beg your pardon. She. Last week I see a film, Swedish sextet. Yeah, well, never mind what you saw. A sextet means six people. See, like in the film, there were <laughs> six big Swedish girls with a big. Yeah, don't tell me. You just look it up in the dictionary and write it out ten times. That's right. That's right. Suli, to complete the phrase as wise as, you could have put an owl or even Solomon, but not Chairman Mao. <laughs> wiser than everybody. Yeah, well, that's your opinion. Uh, Anna, yeah. a sorcerer is a wizard and not something you put a cup on. <laughs> mm. Danielle, congratulations. Absolutely perfect. Mm, thank you. But what about my homework? <laughs> I was referring to your homework. Oh. Giovanni, the correct word to describe a relative by marriage is in-law, as in brother-in-law, and not, as you put, outlaw. <laughs> It's the same thing. It is not the same thing. An outlaw is a bandit. Well, so is my brother-in-law. <laughs> yes, well, I hope you find Miss Courtney's questions as amusing. She'll be here any Excuse minute. Me, Don't interrupt. I tend to tolerate your frivolous attitude, but you'll find that Miss Courtney is a horse of a different colour. Oh, blimey. You should not be calling Miss Courtney a horse. I wasn't, although there may be a certain resemblance. <laughs> Mr. Brown, please. Just a minute, Daniel. I haven't finished yet. As I was saying, Miss Courtney will not be as tolerant as I, but on the other hand, you mustn't let her intimidate you. She may be a bit of an ogre, but uh, she's only human. Excuse me, please, Mr. What's Brown. to you all? Why are you constantly interrupting me? I think they are trying to indicate my <laughs> Ah, Miss Courtney, I didn't hear you come in. Obviously. How long have you been long here? Long enough. And now, Mr. Brown, if you don't mind, this horse of a different colour, this human ogre, would like to find out how clever your students are. Yeah, well, certainly, they're all, they're all yours. Now, who would like to be first? Well, don't all rush to volunteer. <laughs> oh, very well. I will ask a question, and uh, anyone who wishes may answer. Now then. What is a circumflex? Oh, come along, circumflex. C I R C U M F L E X. I'm sure somebody knows what a circumflex is. Uh, yes, please. Good. What is it? No milk today. <laughs> I beg your 
beg your pardon. So sorry. Circumflex is an accent mark. Would you bring me that piece of paper, please? Which piece of paper? <laughs> the piece you are hiding in your hand. You are meaning this one. Thank you. Mr. Brown? Mr. Brown? Yes? Would you wait in the corridor until I have finished with your students? Well, I... I... Good. Dan, shut the door after you. Oh, and Mr. Brown? Yes? You might as well take this. You may need it for your milkman. <laughs> now, to continue. I am a foreigner. Nein, you are English. <laughs> well, let us imagine that I am a foreigner. Please, Miss Courtney, what kind of foreigner are you being? Does it matter? Oh, yes. How can we be imagined when we are not know what to be imagined? <laughs> Oh, very well. I am Russian. And if anyone says, well, am I Russian too, I shall scream. <laughs> now, Miss Schmidt. Yeah. I approach you in the street and I say, please, will you tell me the time? What is your reply? Time you bought yourself a watch. <laughs> that is extremely rude. I do not like Russians. <laughs> Let's try it with some general knowledge. Mr. Singh. Where is uh, Sydney? Outside, cleaning the corridor. <laughs> Not the caretaker, the city. Thousand apologies. Anybody? Australia. Good. Mr. Nakazumi. Ah, uh, so. What can you tell me about the Duke of Windsor? Uh, which one? There is only one Duke of Windsor. Not so. Near where I live, there are three Duke of Windsor. Two Dukes of Cambridge, and one Prince of Wales. I was referring to the person, not a public house. <laughs> Does anyone know what the letters GC mean? Giovanni Cupello. <laughs> George Cross. What class is he in? <laughs> I don't think I can stand anymore. Mr. Brown. Finished already? I am leaving while I still retain some shred of sanity. Well, you obviously didn't give her very good answers. Eh, not our fault. Questions were too difficult. Well, you just have to work harder, right? It's almost time to go now. Don't forget your homework, please. See you tomorrow. Oh, God, not again! Haven't you finished yet, Sidney? I've washed it twice. Well, wash it again. It's still dirty. <laughs> Time to go home, Ellie. Oh, blimey. I'm not wanting to go. What's the matter? Can I be speaking to you most confidentially? Yes, of course you can. Fire right away. What's your problem? You see, my wife, Rihanna, she's becoming another person. Oh, dear. Have you tried hormones? <laughs> what are you meaning? Well, I don't know much about these sex changes. Oh, no, she's not doing anything like that. No, oh, but you just said she was becoming another person. Yes, she's becoming another lady person, not man person. Oh, I see. You mean she's behaving differently? Yes, please. She's making phone calls. And when I am coming in, she's hanging up chop chop. <laughs> and at night times, she's going out, leaving me in the house with the baby. Ah, I'm beginning to see daylight. Of course, it is not being dark yet. <laughs> no, you have just had a baby. No, my wife had the baby. But that's it, don't you see? Lots of women change after they've had babies. It's called postnatal depression. I'm sure she'll get over it. Some night, she's not letting me sleep with her. Have you thought about getting an au pair? Oh, blimey. She would not be letting me sleep with an au pair. <laughs> I need to help with the baby. Sorry, please. I also think she ought to see a doctor. Oh, no, she's not liking doctors very much. But she ought to talk to somebody. Perhaps you could talk to her. Me? Yes, please. Well, I hardly think I'm qualified. You must be helping me. All right, I'll come home with you tonight and we'll see what we can do. Jolly good. All right. Yes. It's probably nothing. Ah. Good night, Sid. Good night, Sid. <laughs> Hello, my beloved. Baby is fed. Curry is in oven. I am going out. Where are you going? 
pleased to be minding your own business. Hey, I'm bringing Mr. Brown home. Hello, Mr. Brown. It is good of you to be keeping Ali company. Yeah, well, actually, I came to... Well, work. have a nice evening. Do not be waiting up for me, Ali. See? See what I am meaning? Where is she going? What is she doing? Who is she seeing? Well, you wait here. I'll follow her and see where she goes. Staying late tonight, I think Ali is getting suspicious. <laughs> Keys back. No, oh, thank you, Sydney. If you see Gladys, tell her she can take my tray. Aye? Take my tray. Where to? Not you, Gladys. Oh. Oh, you're wearing a black tie, Sydney. Yes, I'm in mourning. 28 years to the day it happened. Oh, dear. The death of a loved one. No, I got married. <laughs> <laughs> you're a real male chauvinist pig. Pardon? Pig. Oh, you've met the wife, have you? <laughs> That will do, Sydney. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's the fella I want. Hey, I want some advice from a man with experience. Oh, well, I've been about a bit. Uh, what do you want to know? Well, I need your help as a married man. Oh, I am sorry. Pardon? You kept it dark. I'm not married. You are. Oh, don't remind me. Look, son, if you're thinking of taking the plunge, forget it. It's worse than doing porridge. Now, what can I give you some advice on? I've changed my mind. I don't think you are qualified to help me. I'll ask Miss Courtney. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Is it time, then? What time are you referring to? Lesson time. Oh, no. Rehana is coming to see Mr. Brown. This is Seed, our caretaker man. This is Mrs. Nadim, the wife of Ali. I'm very nice, too. Oh. We are making for him a surprise. It is thank you party for being such good husband and giving me beautiful baby. Oh. But we are not wanting him to be finding out. No, already he is most suspicious with me going out to arrange everything with Ranji. Oh, don't worry, I want to tell a dicky. Never mind this dicky. <laughs> it is hard you should not be finding out. That's what I just said. When is the surprise? Tonight. You are welcome to be coming if you are wishing. Oh, Tom. Jamila is making lovely food and Gladys is making delicious cakes. Please, where is Mr. Brown? He's in Miss Courtney's office. Good. I must be asking him to be keeping Ali late after class so all students can be arriving for party before he is getting home. Oh. While you are seeing Mr. Brown, I go to be speaking with Gladys. Oh, good. And you can buy me a nice cup of tea. See you later, love. <laughs> See who that is, Mr. Brown. Tell her. Tell his wife. I wonder what she wants. Are you sure you didn't tell Ali about her affair? Positive. I just told him I'd lost her. Well, perhaps he wants to confide in you because you are Ali's friend. Oh, well, couldn't she uh, confide in you? Certainly not. It is your problem. You will deal with it. I'll leave you alone. Mr. Brown will see you now. Sorry about that. Uh, come in, Rahana. Sit down. I am wanting to be asking you something. Yeah, well, before you do, I've got something to tell you. Please sit down. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> I am 
we've been waiting. Yes. Uh, look, uh, firstly, tell me something. Do you love Ali? Oh, yes. Very much indeed. Good, good. <laughs> well, what I have to say is, is rather delicate, uh, but you, you and Ali are both sensible, intelligent people. Thank you. And you've been married for almost two years now, and you've now got uh, a lovely little baby. Yes. Well, I, I want you to know that I understand how these things can happen. What things? Well, not babies, but, um... Well, look, um, let me put it another way. When two people um, have been married for a while, sometimes familiarity creeps in. Two people living together, doing the same things day after day, to seeing the same faces. It's only natural that uh, occasionally one of the parties feels that something is missing, some uh, excitement, perhaps. So it's not unusual in these occasions for one of the parties to meet somebody else, uh, to try and recapture the first flush of romance. Mr. Brown? Uh, please, uh, let me finish. Let me say just one thing. The vital question you must ask yourself is whether to lightly throw away what you have already for some uh, passing infatuation or to rise above it and start afresh. To err is human and to forgive, divine. That's all I have to say. Oh, I see. Now, what was it you wanted to ask me? No, it is not important now. Well, Mr. Brown, how did you manage? Uh, extremely well, I think, Miss Scott. Oh, sorry. I was um, very tactful and, uh, well, I think she got the message. Here, yeah, are you all right? It is Mr. Brown. He is telling me something terrible. What is it? It is my Ali. He is having an affair with another woman. <laughs> <coughs> Hello, Ranjit. Good evening, O oh most wise and illustrious one. Yes, well, I wish I could say the same about you. Incidentally, before the other students arrive, I have something to tell you. I know everything. That is why I'm calling you most wise and illustrious. <laughs> I mean about what you and Ali's wife have been up to. Thousand apologies. Well, I think it's Ali you should be apologizing to. Why should I be apologizing to Ali? For your behavior. After all, she is his wife. I am knowing that. That is why we are keeping it secret from him. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, no. I am very pleased to be doing it. Yeah, I, bet you are. <laughs> I am sure if she's asking you to do the same, you'd be most happy to apply. <laughs> I hardly think so. Please, not to be telling Ali. Well, I won't. For his sake, not yours. Good. We are not wanting him to be finding out before tonight. Well, why tonight? Tonight, he'll be knowing everything. Are you going to tell him? No, he'll be seeing for himself. <laughs> Good Lord. It'll be a big surprise. I think it'll be a shock. <laughs> you are also coming to the party tonight. What party? The one we have been arranging for Ali. I'm getting a bit confused. You are saying you are knowing everything? Yeah, well, I just realized I don't know quite as much as I thought I did. Now, tell me something, Ranji. Have you been seeing Ali's wife? Most certainly. To be arranging the party for him tonight at 10 o'clock. And that's all? Just a party? Oh. <laughs> Buenas noches, Senor Brown. One. Si, sí, Senor. This is an English class. When you arrive here, I expect you to speak English. No more Buenas noches. Good evening. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, Senor Brown. Yeah, that's better. Ah. Buonasera. Eh, no, buonasera. Speak it English. Don't you tell me to speak it English, you great Spanish onion. <laughs> I punch your head in, you, you Italian ice cream. Yeah, all right, I can do. Sit down. You tell him, senor. But uh, I'm telling both of you, you sit down. It's all right, it's all right. And I'll tell you what I told one. This is an English class, and when you arrive here, I expect you to speak English. No more buonasera. Good evening. Okay, okay. Good. Calisperas. Good night. Bonsoir, Monsieur Brown. I give up. <laughs> oh, good evening, Jamila. I have knit for you a scarf. Oh, very kind of you. <laughs> very patriotic. <laughs> Not quite long. Ah, it is be start as pair of sockies, but. I am forget to turn round here, so I make it a little bit more longer. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Sure, it'll come in useful. <laughs> ah, good evening, Sue. Carol. Good evening. Yes. 
Right, now, bef before we go, um... Before we go any further this evening, the uh, Education Authority are taking some kind of census and require these forms for the year. So, um, it's self-explanatory. If you'd uh, complete them now, and then if you have any problems, don't hesitate to ask, because that's what I'm here for. All right? Eh, hey, I have problem. Pan, how can you have a problem? You haven't even looked at your form yet. No pen. <laughs> Ah, right. Right. Anybody else got a pen? Yes. 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 Sorry. Good. Right. Now, all you have to do is fill in your surname, your first names, your address in England, your birth, occupation, sex, marital status, and what subject you're taking. Excuse me. Yes, Giovanni. I have a problem with my first names. Well, surely you know them. Sure. Giovanni, Vincenzo, Marco, Dino, Alberto, Lena. Yeah, oh, all right. So what's the problem? I can't get them on the paper. <laughs> well, just put as many as you can. Okay, Koki. Monsieur Brown, please. Um, I do not know the name of the hospital where I was born. You don't have to put the hospital, just the town. Just the town? Have you put the hospital too? No. Place where born? Bed. <laughs> Finish. Good. Correction, not so good. Por favor. The correct answer to sex is not at least once a week. <laughs> you should put male or female. Eh, hey, no sex with male. <laughs> Only female. Squeeze, please. Uh, I'm, I'm being late. You almost missed the census. Rihanna is still being very mysterious. Oh, look, don't worry. Everything will be all right. Tonight at 10 o'clock, all will be revealed. Are you really sure Ali is knocking about with another bird? Yes. Mr. Brown would not be telling me lies. Yes. Oh, they're all alike, these men. <laughs> Doesn't deserve a party like this. I am yeah. being so unhappy. I know what I would do. What? Kick him out. <laughs> Anna is right. He is be being unfaithful. He behaved like an animal. He deserves what he gets. Yeah. He does. Hello, my beloved. Don't you beloved me, you... <laughs> <laughs> You very bad man, you. Mr. Brown is telling me you are having girlfriend. You damn fool! Why are you saying that for? I didn't. You've obviously misunderstood me. You are nearly breaking up my marriage. Oh, I am sorry, Harry. <laughs> it is you I should be throwing cakey at. Please, you cannot be throwing cakey at Mr. Brown. I will do it. What? <laughs> Thank you.